Section 1 and these are the generations of its Hak. Rabbi Shia leads us to an understanding of the relationship between the Creator and the Torah. We learn how the world is maintained by Torah study and why it is man's supreme duty to continue the study. Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda explain the significance of the forms of blessing from Abraham to Yitzhak to Yaakov in whom all that has come before is manifested. We learn that true servants of the Creator are not only those from Israel, but anyone anywhere who studies the Torah. The relevance of this passage, the study of Torah, does not refer to a cerebral academic approach to thousands of words on parchment through the eyes of the Kabbalists. The Torah is understood as a medium through which the energy of the Creator is expressed in our physical dimension of existence. The sinew we parchment, the cold black ink, and the primordial letters are all intricate components of a divine communication instrument serving one express purpose to help willing students uproot all their character flaws in order to attain similarity of nature and thus closeness to the light of the Creator that said Abraham Yitzhak and Yaakov signify the right left and central column forces that is the desire to share the desire to receive and the free will to choose between and balance the two Yaakov also corresponds to the sphere of Yezid the gateway through which all the light of the supernal realms enters our world essentially. The purpose of this passage is to ignite the primordial light of the Torah as we meditate upon the words the emitted light refines our imperfections the strength of the patriarchs and especially the central column force of Yaakov enhances our ability to resist and triumph over our reactive self-indulgent drives finally the light accumulated through our interaction with the Zohar shines universally helping to awaken the world to the internal truths of the Torah and all that the light of it. Creator can offer us one, and these are the generations of its hot. Bereshit 2519. Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the verse, Who can utter the mighty acts of Hashem, who can declare all his praise? Tehillim 1062. Come and behold, when the Holy One, blessed be he, wished to create the world, he did so according to the Torah, and every act that the Holy One, blessed be he, used to create the world was done according to the Torah. This is the meaning of that I was by him as a nursling, and I was. Daily is delight. Mishlei 830. Do not pronounce it as a nursling hebomon, but rather a craftsman hebomon, because it was a tool for his craft too. When he wanted to create man, the Torah said to him, If man is created, he will sin, and you will punish him. Would not your hand work then be in vain? After all, he will not be able to endure the punishment. The Holy One, blessed be he, replied, I created repentance before I created the world. If he will sin, he will be able to repent and be forgiven. When the Holy One blessed be he created the world and created Adam he said to it world world you and your nature are based solely upon the Torah and for that reason I created man in you to be occupied with the study of the Torah and if he does not study the Torah I will return you to chaos everything is for man this is the meaning of the verse I have made the earth and created man upon it Yeshua 4512 the Torah proclaims to men to be occupied with and endeavor in the study of the Torah but no one lends an ear three come and behold whoever studies the Torah sustains the world and properly sustains every act in the world there is no part within man that does not have a counterpart creature in the world just as the body of man is composed of levels of parts that act together to form a unified body so is the world all the creatures in the world are hierarchical parts that act on and react with each other so they will actually be as one body everything whether it be man or the world resembles the Torah because the Torah is made of different parts and sections that support each other when they are all correct they will become as one body when David looked at this work he said Hashem how manifold are your works in wisdom you have made them all the earth is full of your creatures Tehillim 10424 for the Torah contains supernal sealed mysteries that man cannot grasp it contains all supernal matters those revealed and those not revealed because of their depth they are revealed to the scholar but disappear immediately only to be revealed in the next instant and disappear again and so it continues for those who study them the Torah contains all the matters above in the supernal worlds and below everything in this world and everything in the world to come is in the Torah but there is no one to observe and understand them thus it is written who can utter the mighty acts of Hashem who can declare all his praise Tehillim 1062 5 come and behold when Solomon Unsuccessfully tried to understand the words and subtleties of the Torah, he said, I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. Kahilat 723, David said, Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your Torah. Tehillim 11918, come and behold, it is written of Solomon that he spoke 3,000 proverbs and his poems were a 1,005. I may lash him 512. This is because there were 5,000 interpretations of each proverb. He told, If this is true of the words of Solomon who was flesh and blood, how many proverbs? Chance praises, mysteries, and wise thoughts are contained in the words of the Torah as spoken by the Holy One. Blessed be he, therefore, it is written, Who can utter the mighty acts of Hashem? 6, come and behold, it is written, Now these are the generations of Yishmael. Bereshit 2,512, and there are 12 princes, and it is written, And these are the generations of its Hakibit 19. Is it possible that because it is written that Yishmael sired 12 princes and its Hakibit 2 Yishmael is? More righteous than its hak, it is therefore written who can utter the mighty head wrought acts of Hashem. This refers to its hak as its hak is Gura of Zeir and for its hak sired Yaakov who alone is more important than all of them for he fathered the twelve tribes and sustained the upper and the lower while its hak supported the higher and supernal holiness and Yishmael only below. Therefore the verse who can utter the mighty acts of Hashem refers to its hak as explained above it. Words declare all his praises refers to Yaakov because Yaakov representing existence both above and below contains all his praises when the sun Zeir and connects with the moon but many stars shine from them. They are the twelve tribes of Yah likened to the stars in Yosef stream seven and these are the generations of its hak. Abraham's son Rabbi Yossi asks what has changed it did not say Abraham's son previously for although it is written Elohim blessed his son its hak Bereshit. 2,511 Abraham is now dead that is he blessed and raised the level of its hak which is pure after the death of Abraham thus the image of Abraham was upon its hak and stayed with him which means that the quality of Abraham which is Jesus remained within its hak so that whoever saw its hak said this is surely Abraham and pronounced that Abraham begot its hak who was included in and clothed with the quality of Abraham which is Jesus therefore the scripture here specifically reads Abraham son as well as Abraham begot its hak ate Rabbi its hak rose one night to study Torah while Rabbi Yehuda who was in the city of Caesarea also rose at the same hour to study Torah Rabbi Yehuda said I will walk to Rabbi its hak and study Torah together with him he went with his son Shizkiah who was then a boy when he approached the door he heard Rabbi its hak say and it came to pass after the death of Abraham that Elohim blessed his son its hak and its hak dwelt by beer. Lach I R O I Bereshit 2511 He then asks a difficult question in this verse. The beginning does not fit the end, and the end does not fit the beginning. It begins with the death of Abraham and ends with the blessing of Itzhak, and there is no connection between these events. He then posed another difficult question: Why this change? Why should the Holy One bless be He bless Itzhak and not Abraham? He answers: Since Abraham did not bless Itzhak, Hashem blessed him after he died. This is the connection between the beginning and end of the verse. And it came to pass: He asks, Why did Abraham not bless him? And he replied: So that Isav his son would not be blessed with him. That is so that Isav would not draw down the illumination of the left as is his unholy want. Therefore, these blessings passed to the Holy One. Bless be He and the Holy One. Bless be He. Bless Itzhak of the verse. And Itzhak dwelt at Beer Lach I R O I. He asks, What is the meaning of Lach I R O I? And answers. That he was united with the Shechinah as the Aramaic translation reads the well where the angel of the covenant was seen. This is the well namely the Shechinah upon which the angel of the covenant Yezid was seen. Therefore he blessed him by this we may understand the connection of the three parts of this verse. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham who did not bless Itzhak that Elohim blessed his son Itzhak. Why did he bless him? Because Itzhak dwelt at Ber lash I R O I for. He joined the Shechinah 9 in the meantime Rabbi Yehuda knocked on the door entered and joined him. Rabbi Itzhak said now the Shechinah is with us. Rabbi Yehuda said that this explanation concerning Ber lash I R O I is good but there is more to be understood from the words one should understand your interpretation from the words themselves. He began with the verse of fountain of
And Nehu the son of Yehoiada the son of a valiant living man, Jushmuel 2320. This means that he was righteous and illuminated his generation as the living one above Yezid of Zeir and illuminates the world. Mukva, thus the well which is Mukva constantly looks to the living one who is Yezid in order to be illuminated and its hot dwelt by Bealash Iroi. It is written when he took Rivka for the well is the secret of Rivka, namely the Mukva of Zeir and as he united with her. It represented the joining of darkness and night as it is written, his left hand is under my head. Sure Hashirim 26 come and behold its hot was in Kiryat Arba after Abraham died. He asks what about the verse that reads and its hot dwelt by Bealash Iroi. The response is that this does not necessarily indicate his abode but rather the name of the Mukva with which he joined and was united in that well to stir up love as we said 12 Rabbi Itzhak began the discussion with the verse. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to its place where it rises again. Kahila 15 The sun also rises refers to the sun's eir and which shines on the moon the mukva for when the sun is seen by her she shines and the sun illuminates and shines from the supreme place that is above it which is by from where it receives its illumination and it always rises and the sun goes down means that when it comes to mate with the moon mukva it goes towards the south of its six which is the right column of zeir and and there reposes its strength this means that its main illumination is in the right which is chesedim because its strength is in the right as a result all the strength of a man's body is in the right side from which stems the strength of the body later it reads and veers to the north and shines upon the side namely the south and shines upon that side namely the north round and round goes the wind but he asks why is it first written sun and now it is Called wind, he responded that all is one secret because Zeir Anpin is the inner meaning of the light of the wind and is called sun, and all this happens round and round goes the wind dash so that the moon will illuminate by its light and the two will join thirteen come and behold when Abraham came into the world he embraced the moon and brought her near when its hot came he took her and held her and drew her lovingly as it is written his left hand is under my head Sure Hashirim 26 when Yaakov came he united the sun Zeir Anpin with the moon the Mukva and the Mukva shone so Yaakov became whole in every aspect and the moon shone and was perfected by the twelve tribes fourteen Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse Behold bless Hashem all you servants of Hashem Tehillim 1341 this verse was explained yet come and behold it is written Behold bless Hashem who are those worthy of blessing the Holy One blessed be he the scripture says all you servants of Hashem Although anyone from Israel is worthy of blessing the Holy One, blessed be he nevertheless who gives the blessings for the sake of the supernal and lower beings. The scripture says, All you servants of Hashem, yet not everyone whose blessing is considered a blessing. The scripture says, Those who stand by night in the house of Hashem, but those who wake up at midnight to study Torah, these are those who stand by night in the house of Hashem. According to the scripture, they must be both the servants of Hashem and also rise at midnight. For then the Holy One, blessed be he, comes to delight with the righteous in the Garden of Eden. And we are here awakened by the words of the Torah. Let us discuss its hawk, for we are on his level. Section 2 and its hawk was 40 years old. We learned that Rivka, because she was like the lily among thorns, countervails the harsh judgments of Abraham. And its hawk next rabbi, its hawk teaches the inner meaning of it. Marriage of its to Rivka, how she represents its opposite and how their union provides a balance that sweetens the world. The relevance of this passage thorns signify the severe judgments that appear in our world. The lily represents the tenderness and beauty of life. Its thorns and Rivka, the lily are the vessels through which these spiritual forces are established. The key to any fulfilling relationship lies in a delicate balance between both qualities a husband and wife. Bring their own particular attributes to a marriage by harnessing the forces of its and Rivka. We create greater balance in all our human interactions and particularly in our marital ties. 15 The scripture reads, And its was 40 years old when he took Rivka for a wife. Bear she 2520. Why is its age given here? Why does it say he was 40 years old when he married Rivka? He began his answer by saying that its was included within north and south, which are fire and water. And was then 40 years old when he took Rivka further the text as the appearance of the Bayashis 128 means that Rivka had the appearance of the rainbow which is green white and red which are Chisid Bira and Tiferet of Mukvashi the Mukva was 3 years old when he seized it when he took Rivka that is married her and he sired a son when he was 60 which was after attaining the 6 Farah Chisid to Yezid so that he would properly sire Yaakov who was the issue of a man of 60 years held onto all the 6 Farah and became a whole man 16 why are we told the daughter of Betuel the Aramean of Patan Aram the sister to Levin the Aramean why should we care to know all this it had already been written and Betuel sired Rivka Bershi 2223 and now she is described as a Patan Aram the sister to Levin the Aramean he answers that it is to teach us that although she was born among the misled she did not follow their ways therefore it is written that she was the daughter of Betuel of Patanaram and the sister of Levin who were all wicked and evildoers but she did good deeds and did not behave as they did. 17 Now we should study this further if Rivka was 20 years old or at least 13 it would be considered praiseworthy that she did not do as they did but since she was only 3 years old how can she be praised for her actions? Rabbi Yehuda replied that although she was only 3 years old she can be judged by how she behaved. Toward the servant this must mean that she had the wisdom of a 20 year old and therefore she may be praised for not learning from what they did. 18 Rabbi Yitzhak said though she acted wisely toward the servant I do not yet know if her behavior was right or not come and behold it is written like the lily among thorns so is my love among the daughters. Sure Hashirim 22 the lily is the congregation of Israel namely the Mukva of Zeir Anpin which is among the legions as a lily among it. Thorns the hidden meaning is that its hawk came from the side of Abraham's supernal Chisit who is kind to all creatures and although he represented severe judgment he nevertheless draws Chisit from Abraham Rivka also came from the side of harsh judgment of Betul and Levin although she was herself of weak judgment in the secret of the redness of the lily and a thread of Chisit was attached to her in the secret of the whiteness of the lily nevertheless she came from severe judgment thus because its hawk was severe in his judgment and Rivka was softer in her judgment she was as a lily among the thorns and if the Mukva were not of weak judgment the world would not have been able to bear the harsh judgment of its hawk in this manner the Holy One blessed be he joins couples in the world the severe with the weak thus its hawk was of severe judgment and Rivka of soft judgment so as to balance everything they would be able to receive the illumination of Chakma and the world would be Sweden section 3 and its hawk entreated we are instructed in the prayer and spiritual actions practiced by its hawk in order for the child Yaakov to be born we see also how the creator responded to its hawk's entreaties this discussion enlightens us about the structure of prayer and of how the prayers of the righteous allow the prayers of less good men to be heard next the puzzling fact that its hawk loved Esau more than Yaakov is explained in terms of its spiritual significance the son of Abraham represents left column energy which expresses judgment Esau we are told denotes the same negative force which is an indication that its hawk has not yet learned to modify and balance the severity of his own judgment the relevance of this passage this powerful passage influences many areas of life including the miracle of childbirth though our own prayers might not have wings to ascend to the highest worlds we can still contact the upper realms through the updraft created by the prayers of the righteous, finally the text points out that our tendency is to welcome and embrace people into our lives whose nature is similar to our own. In contrast, we're quick to pass judgment and distance ourselves from those who differ from us. This negative predisposition is weakened and abetted so that we can live according to the principle of thy neighbor as thyself. 19 Rabbi Yehuda continued with the verse and its hawk entreated Hashem for his wife. Bear she 2521 he asked what is the meaning of entreated and he replied that he offered a sacrifice and prayed for her. What offering did he sacrifice? A burnt offering it is understood that entreated indicates that he sacrificed by studying the verses and Hashem was entreated of him a bit and so Hashem was entreated for the land. 2 Samuel 2425 there it means that a sacrifice has been offered. So here too it means a sacrifice has been offered. It is written and it's hawk entreated and Hashem was entreated if entreated indicate
channel and then even the prayers of the unworthy are answered 22 come and behold Abraham did not pray before the Holy One blessed be he so that he would give him sons even though Sarah was barren and although it may be said that he prayed saying behold to me you gave no seed Beersheet 153 it is not a prayer but simply a statement to his master but it's hot prayed for his wife because he knew that his wife and not he was sterile and although it's hot knew by the inner meaning of wisdom that Yaakov was bound to come from him and produce the twelve tribes he did not know whether this would be from his wife or from another therefore the scripture reads for his wife Beersheet 2521 and not specifically for Ripka 23 Rabbi Yehuda's son asks why then did not Itzhak love Yaakov as he loved Esau if he knew that he would sire the twelve tribes he replied well said he loved Esau better because everyone loves and is attracted to his own kind 24 come and behold Esau was born all red as it is written and the first came out red all over Beersheet 2525 thus he is the same as Itzhak who is a harsh judgment above in holiness and Esau who issued from him is the harsh judgment below Esau's head was in the holy system but his body was not therefore he resembled Itzhak and because each is drawn to his own kind Itzhak loved Esau more than Yaakov as it is written and Itzhak loved Esau he relished his venison of 28 which means that his head is in the holy System here it is written for he relished his venison which is similar to wherefore it is said like Nimrod the mighty hunter before Hashem Beer sheet 109 in both places hunting refers to harsh judgment and the scriptures tell us that he loved him because they were both of severe judgment section 4 and the children struggled together within her here we explore the relationship of Yaakov to Esau we are shown Esau's identification with the serpent and the necessity of Yaakov to deal with this evil in order to transform holy Israel into the chosen part and portion of the creator Yaakov's battles with Esau are a metaphor denoting the establishment of a spiritual system that expresses the paradigm of good versus evil in human existence we see more clearly how the naming of Yaakov signifies his special role and his difference from Abraham and it's hot the importance of the struggle of Yaakov with Esau for the future is also explained along. With the methods used in this ongoing battle with evil, the relevance of this passage Yaakov and Esau were born together in the womb of Rivka on a macrocosmic level. Yaakov represents the forces of good, Esau the forces of evil, and the womb of Rivka symbolizes our physical world on the micro level. This dynamic represents the positive and negative aspects of our own nature. This portion of Zohar gives us power over our dark side so that we can overcome our internal demons. 25 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Hashem. Beersheet 2522, where did she go to the academy of Shem and Eber? The children struggled together within her because the wicked Esau was warring against Yaakov. There, the term struggle, Hebei Tratzatsu, is similar to the expression to break Hebratzatz one's head, for they struggled and were divided. Come and behold, ESAB was of the side of he who rides. The serpents of El while Yaakov was of the side who rides the perfect holy throne of the side of the sun's E E I R and that is united with the moon and with the twenty six come and behold since Esau followed on the serpent Yaakov dealt with him slyly as the serpent was cunning and had crooked ways as it is written the serpent was crafty or Beersheet thirty one which means that he was cunning and sly what Yaakov did with Esau was serpent like this was as it ought to have been by making Esau go after that serpent so that he would be separated from Yaakov and thus share nothing with him in this world or in the world to come thus we learn he who comes to kill you hasten to kill him first it is written in the womb he took his brother by the Hashia one hundred and twenty four which means that he lowered him down by the heel that is separated him from holiness and lowered him into the side of defilement called heel which was at the end of holiness this is the meaning of and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. Beersheet 2526 for he put his hands on the heel to subjugate him to holiness 27 another explanation of the verse and his hand took hold is that Yaakov could not be separated from him entirely so his hand held the heel of Esau his hand is the moon which is the mukba called the hand of Tiferet which is Yaakov whose light was darkened because he held Esau's heel therefore Yaakov needed to be clever with him to push him down so he would cleave to his place in the other side and be completely severed from holiness 28 and he called his name Yaakov means that the holy one blessed be he assuredly called him Yaakov come and behold it is written and he called his name Yaakov Beersheet 2736 and not and his name was called Yaakov but did he not rightly call him Yaakov for he has supplanted me have Yaakov any of it this refers to the holy one blessed be he who called him Yaakov surely the holy one blessed be he saw that the primordial serpent was wise in an evil way when Yaakov came the Holy One blessed be he said that he must be wiser than the serpent therefore he called him Yaakov who became known for his wisdom he knew how to deceive the serpent and to separate him from all things holy 29 we have already explained that wherever it is written he called without alluding to who called it is the lower grade the Nukba as it is written and called Moshe Vayikra 11 it is the Nukba who called to Moshe and here it is written and he called his name Yaakov Beersheet 2526 year 2 it is the Nukba of Zeir Anpin who called his name Yaakov for no man even named Yaakov as it is written elsewhere and called it Lithim El the Elohim Israel Beersheet 3320 this is the Holy One blessed be he who called Yaakov El he said to him I am El among the upper and you are El among the lower this is to show that he was not named by flesh and blood but by the Holy One blessed be he 30 come and behold Yaakov knew that he's off had to cleave to the tortuous serpent as a result in all that Esau did he acted as slyly and crookedly just like another tortuous serpent this is as it ought to be this agrees with the words of Rabbi Shimon and Elohim created the great crocodiles which refer to Yaakov and Esau and every living creature that moves Beersheet 121 refers to the levels between them for Yaakov and Esav are called crocodiles that is serpents as has been explained Esav was the tortuous serpent and Yaakov drew against himself a kind of tortuous serpent by necessity Yaakov needed to behave wisely to stand against the other serpent this is as it must be 31 for that reason one he go to sacrifice monthly to draw the serpent to his place so that he will be separated from the moon the Nukba of Zeir and whose light was covered by Esav's heel in addition he go should be sacrificed on Yom Kippur this is done with wisdom so as to control the serpent so that he cannot do evil this is it. Meaning of the verse and the goat have sair shall bear upon it all their iniquities. Vayikra 1622. This refers to Esau who is hairy. Have sair. All of this was done wisely and cleverly. Why? Because it is written and with the perverse you will show yourself subtle. Talim 1827. This is the evil serpent, the tortuous spirit, wise in wickedness, who accuses above and incites below. 32. For this reason the children of Israel hasten to treat him with sly wisdom, so he will not be able to cause evil. And rule therefore Yaakov who is imbued with the true faith treated Esau in all that he did, so that there would be no place for that serpent to defile the temple or approach it, and thereby rule the world. Thus Abraham did not need to behave slyly, and neither did it talk for Esau who was on the side of the serpent had not yet come into the world. But Yaakov the landlord, the husband of the Shechinah, had to stand against that serpent to prevent him from ruling and defiling the temple of Yaakov. The Nukba therefore Yaakov had to fight him more cleverly than the rest of the people in the world hence because Yaakov fought with him slyly and bought his birthright and blessings from him holy Israel were chosen to be the part and portion of the Holy One blessed be he as it is written for Hashem's portion is his people Yaakov is a lot of his inheritance Devarim 329 section 5 the feast of the righteous in the future to come here the rabbis discuss the shape of things to come the time when the creator will raise the dead the discussion first centers on the physical nature of this event and explores the question of the soul's place in heaven along with its movement into a new body no longer made of dust the feast that the creator will prepare for his people is described in all its many levels of meaning from mundane food and drink to the meal of supernal splendor this meal we're told includes no physical food or drink and is a kind of Meal that was eaten by Moses during his forty days and forty nights with the Creator. We learn too about who will partake of each kind of meal and what comprises the meals. The passage concludes with an inspiring vision of the future, which is described as begetting laughter and joy in the world. The relevance of this
Upon them all the kinds of fragrances that are in the Garden of Eden as it is written the mandrakes give a fragrance 35 Rabbi Yitzhak said do not pronounce it Dutte mandrakes but rather Dutte lovers they are the body and the soul who are lovers and friends to each other Rav Nachman said they are real mandrakes as the mandrakes bring love into the world so they create love in the world and they give off a fragrance which is how they know and recognize their creator 36 the verse. And at our gates Sher Hasharim 714 refers to the gates of heaven which are open to brings down souls for cadavers all manner of choice fruits refers to the souls new and old refers to those whose souls left them years ago and those whose souls left them only a few days ago they merited by their skillful deeds to enter the world to come all of them are destined to descend simultaneously to enter the bodies that are prepared for them 37 Rabbi Ch. Bar Yaakov said that a divine voice resounded saying new and old which I have laid up for you O my beloved Sher Hasharim 714 I have laid up for you dash in these same worlds for you means because of you because you are a holy and clean body another explanation is that these mandrakes are the angels of peace give a fragrance refers to souls the fragrance of the world give means to allow as it is written and Sikhan would not allow Yisrael give it bar 2123 38 Rabbi Yehuda said that three classes of ministering angels appear at the beginning of every month and on every Shabbat to escort the soul to its place of ascension what does the verse and at our gates are all manner of choice fruits refer to Rabbi Yehuda said these are bodies standing at the openings of the graves to receive their souls and Duma offers a note of reckoning and proclaims master of the universe old and new those who were buried long ago and those buried not so long ago all these I have laid up for you to take them into account 39 in the name of the Rav, Rabbi Yehuda said that in the future the Holy One blessed be he will rejoice with the righteous and will let his Chechen not dwell among them everybody will rejoice in that joy as it is written let Hashem rejoice in his works Tehillim 10431 Rabbi Yehuda said that at that time the righteous will create worlds and raise the dead Rabbi Yossi said to him we have learned that there is nothing new under the sun Kehillah 19 Rabbi Yehuda responded come and hearken while the wicked are in the world and multiply the whole world does not endure but when the righteous are in the world it does endure and in the future they will raise the dead as it is written old men and old women shall yet again dwell in the streets of Jerusalem and every man with his staff in his hand for very age Zechariah 8440 at that time the righteous will attain complete knowledge for as Rabbi Yossi said when Hashem rejoices in his works then the righteous are destined to grasp the holy. One blessed be he in their hearts and wisdom will abound in their hearts as if they are seeing him with their eyes. This is the meaning of the verse and it shall be said on that day. This is our Elohim, Yeshua 259 and for their existence together the soul shall delight in the body more than anything and that they shall have knowledge and perception of their master and shall have the enjoyment of the splendor of the Shechinah. This is the goodness hidden for the righteous in the future to come. Thus and these are the generations of Itzhak. Abraham's son refers to the generations of gladness and laughter that will exist at that time. Abraham's son is the soul worthy of it and is perfect in its ascent. Abraham begot Itzhak means that the soul sires joy and laughter in the world. 41 Rabbi Yehuda said to Rabbi Shia, we have learned that the Holy One blessed be he will prepare a feast for the righteous in the future. What is this feast? He replied before you went before these holy. Angels, the sages of the mission, I heard what Rabbi Lazar said. It set my heart at peace. For Rabbi Lazar said that the feast of the righteous in the future is as it is written, and they beheld the Elohim and did eat and drink. Shema 2411. Here it is written, eat. But Rabbi Lazar noted that in one place it is explained as enjoy, and in another, eat. What is the difference? He responded, Woe to the righteous who do not have as much merit, they enjoy the splendor, though they do not understand. Everything, however, the righteous who merit the divine splendor eat until they grasp it fully. Food and drink refers to this feast, and eating alone from whom do we know this from Moshe? As it is written, he did neither eat bread nor drink water. Shema 3428. Why so? Because he ate another meal, which is the supernal splendor. The meal of the righteous in the future will be in that manner. 42 Rabbi Yehuda said that the feast of the righteous in the future is to partake of his joy according to the Verse the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Tehillim 343 Rabbi said that it is understood from the verse, but let all those that put their trust in you rejoice, let them ever shout for joy. Tehillim 512 Rabbi Yitzhak said both will occur in the future. We were taught by Rabbi Yossi that cellared wine with its grapes from the six days of creation contains the ancient matters that were not revealed to man from the day the world was created. These are destined to be revealed to the righteous in the future. This is assuredly their food and drink. 43 in the name of Rabbi Shalom. Rabbi Yehuda said that if that is true, what about the Leviathan and the bull as it is written? Surely the mountains bring him forth. Udio 4020 Rabbi Yossi said that it is also written on that day Hashem with his sword and great and strong sword will punish Leviathan the flying serpent and the Leviathan that crooked serpent and he will slay the crocodile that is in the sea. Yeshea 271 this was said thrice to Hint at the kingdom Rabbi Tanjum added that there is nothing to reveal in addition to what the wise men said this is assuredly so 44 Rabbi Yitzhak said I was present before Rabbi Yahashua and asked him about this I said that this feast of the righteous that will be held in the future was said to consist of the Leviathan and the wild bull if this is so there is a contradiction because Rabbi Lazar said that the feast of the righteous in the future will be as it is written in the verse and they beheld the Elohim and did eat and drink Rabbi Yahashua said that Rabbi Lazar was correct 45 Rabbi Yahashua further stated the belief that the sages communicated to most of the people that they are invited to this meal of the Leviathan and the wild bull where they will drink of the good cellared wine preserved from the time of the creation they came upon this verse and you shall eat your bread to the full Vayikra 265 and interpreted it thus Rabbi Zira said the Holy One blessed be he used all kinds of enticements to encourage the children of Israel to return to the good path the greatest of them always when he said to them and you shall eat your bread to the full or among the curses the worst is and you shall eat and not be satisfied but 26 why so because it is written would we had died by the hand of Hashem in the land of Egypt Shema 163 Rabbi Zira said this teaches us that for the sake of eating sacrifice their lives to die by their hands when the Holy One Blessed be he noticed their lust he said to them if you will hearken to keep the commandments you shall eat your bread to the full in order to appease their minds in this matter the wise men saw that the exile would continue they relied on the verses in the Torah and said that they would eat and be merry at the great feast that the Holy One blessed be he will hold for them therefore most of the people in the world suffer this exile for the sake of that feast 46 Rabbi Yochanan said that we should not contradict this belief but support the idea that the feast consists of eating and drinking because the Torah bears witness to it in the verse and you shall eat your bread to the full. Vayikra 265 We already know the faith of the righteous and their desire from the verses. We will be glad and rejoice in you. Sure Hasherim 14 and not in eating and we will praise you love more than wine. Vayikra 265 which alludes to the wine of the Torah that feast that they most of the people in the world are destined for for eating and drinking we will partake of it too. This is the part of joy and laughter and these are the generations of its hot will laugh for the righteous will laugh in the future. Abraham begot its hot as it is the virtue of the soul that begets that laughter and joy in the world. Section 6 The combining of the attribute of mercy with judgment the discussion continues to explore the uniting of Yaakov and Ribka. Evolves toward a more complete understanding explaining the more subtle meanings that arise from this combination of malchut an aspect of judgment and by an aspect of mercy the rabbis also discuss the role of the evil inclination explaining how this too derives from the creator they describe how evil is placed in the human heart discuss its formidably enduring nature and explain its role in reproduction the creation of the evil inclination actually denotes the creation of the desire to receive this desire to receive is a vital and necessary component in man for without it the creator cannot share his infinite beneficence there must be a willing recipient in order for sharing to take place the angel satan however manipulates this vital desire to receive into a desire to receive for the self alone this additional aspect of receiving in a selfish manner is the root of all evil man's spiritual work is to negate the satan's influence and to express our desire to receive through Sharing the relevance
Rabbi Yussi with the verse, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Sure, Hashirim 12, with how many good qualities was the world created? We have learned that Rabbi Ech Bar Yahav said that everything the Holy One blessed be he created in his worlds outside of himself was in collaboration. That is the combining of Malchut and aspect of judgment with Bina and aspect of mercy. It is from these partnerships that many qualities are found in the world. One thought this partnership of good and evil applies to creatures. So he raised the question. Rabbi Ech asks, is that so? Heaven forbid for this will add dissension in the world for everybody who hears him will disagree. For if you say that it means that the angels created as the Holy Spirit itself have a blend of good and evil in them, and their faces and ours are the same, that is angels and men are equal. 48 Rabbi Abba said that it is true, and through this dissension will increase in the world. For we learned in the mission that all that. The Holy One blessed be he did he made his body and soul the Holy One blessed be he joined together the body from Malchut and the soul from Bina this is the secret of joining judgment with mercy one may argue that the angels have no bodies and cannot perform actions until the Holy Soul the light of Bina joins them which is help from above 49 Rabbi Yussi said that the instant the Holy One blessed be he resurrects the dead all troubles will end on the 40th year following the gathering of the exiles it has been resolved by law 40 stripes he may give him and not exceed Devarim 253 the journey of Israel in the desert was completed in the 40th year 40 years before the body is resurrected the soul awaits it in the land of Israel it appears then that in the 40th year of the waiting of the soul in the land of Israel the bodies will rise from the dust after 40 days the rain stopped this is the meaning of the verses and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights bear sheet 712 and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that notes open bear sheet 86 also the time of the redemption of Israel is during the 40th year during the 50th year the world which is Yobel Jubilee will be populated the return of the soul to the body occurs after 40 years of waiting in the land of Israel this is the meaning of and its hawk was 40 years old that is he was waiting for the body when he took Ripka who was put in the body prepared for him their passion and longing at that moment was for the splendor of the Shechina only and to nourish of her splendor this is the meaning of the verse let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth Rabbi Abba said let him kiss me means let him nourish me their soul nourishment is the enjoyment and sustenance of the supernal splendor Rabbi Yossi said that this is proven by the end of the verse which reads for your love is better than one sure Hashirim 1250 the daughter of Means the daughter had Batabel Rab who not disagreed with this. He said that Betul is not one of Malchut's names. I have been to distant lands and heard there that this is the name of the bone of the spine of all the bones. This one remains in the grave and does not rot. It is called Betul the deceitful. That is the scoundrel. I asked about it about its nature and they said that its shape resembles a head of a serpent which is deceitful and that more than any other bone in the body this bone is deceitful. 51 For we have learned that Rabbi Shimon asks why does this bone endure longer than the other bones. This is because it is deceitful and does not bear the taste of human food like the other bones. For that reason it is stronger than all the other bones and at the resurrection of the dead the body will be built on this root. This is the meaning of the verse. The daughter of Betul the Aramean 52 we learned that Rabbi Shimon said it the bone of the spine is deceitful and it came from a deceitful world namely from Patan Aram also deceitful is the evil inclination which is the head of the serpent which is the evil inclination the angel of death this is the meaning of the verse the daughter of Betuel the Aramean who is a deceitful bone of the spine the words of Patan Aram which means that he came from a deceitful head Ramadi world represent two deceivers as we have learned that Patan means a couple the two deceivers are the sister of Laban namely the sister of the deceitful evil inclination at first when it was corrupted by sins in this world it was called Lot in the future when it will no longer be as corrupted it will be as someone who has washed and was cleansed of his impurities and it will be called Laban Lot nevertheless the evil inclination is not eliminated from the world 53 come and hearken we learn from the mission that the two daughters of Lot symbolize the two forces of the body that arouse the evil Inclination because it has bathed and is no longer so impure it is called Laban and the two daughters are not completely negated as it is written and Laban had two daughters bear she 2916 Rabbi Yossi asks why are they referred to as the firstborn and the younger and here the elder and the younger 54 Rabbi Yossi said that they no longer have the power to do evil or arouse the evil inclination this is understood from the verse the name of the elder lit bigger was Leah bear she 2916 for she was weary had Leah from her wickedness and evil while Rachel the younger lit smaller did not have the power to incite as it is written and as a sheep lit Rachel before her shearers is dumb Yeshayah 537 Rabbi Huna said this is the evil inclination its two daughters are different than they were at first first it was Lot cursed and corrupted now it is Laban lit white who has been cleansed not as cursed and corrupted as it was before first its two daughters were strong each head her individual strength now the name of the elder was Leah weary Leah without power weary without strength Leah fatigued from her former deeds and the name of the younger was Rachel as we have said not as they were at first 55 Rabbi Ech Bar Yahav said come and behold it is written and its hot entreated Hashem for his wife because she was barren Bereshit 2521 Rabbi Ech asked why is she barren because the evil inclination does not have its full strength in the world the only fruition and multiplying comes through prayer it is then written and Hashem was entreated by him and Ripka his wife conceived once the evil inclination is aroused there is procreation 56 Rabbi Yossi asks what then is the difference between this world and the world at that time will there be evil inclination to the scripture also says and Hashem was entreated by him and Ripka his wife conceived which means that the Holy One blessed be he does it himself and awakens the evil Inclination at that time which is also puzzling Rabbi Ech said it is so the Holy One blessed be he arouses the evil inclination for the specific purpose of mating but not all the time so that the evil inclination may be with men always and they sin because of it but it is aroused only for mating and the arousal of the evil inclination at the time of union will be caused by the Holy One blessed be he this is the meaning of the verse and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh Yashis 3626 what is a heart of flesh Rabbi Yehuda replied it is a heart that would issue flesh and nothing else as for example a heart that would only beget children therefore it is written and I will give you for the Holy One blessed be he will himself arouse the evil inclination at the time of mating 57 Rabbi Yitzhak the son of Rabbi Yossi traveled from Cappadocia to Lot where he met Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yitzhak asked him why are the companions the Sages of the mission are not aroused in this matter of removing the evil inclination from the world except at the time of mating he replied upon your life the world needs the evil inclination as much as it needs rain because without the evil inclination there would not be the joy of study in the world but it also would not be as corrupted as it was before which caused sinning this is the meaning of the verse they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain Yeshua 119 Rabbi Shimon said my holy mountain is the heart the dwelling place of the evil inclination Rabbi Elizer said a good heart is the foundation of the body and soul for that reason it is written and you shall love Hashem your Elohim with all your heart Devarim 65 for the heart is the essence of all section 7 and the children struggle together within her be the story of Ezab and Yaakov is illuminated using an analogy with man's body and internal organs the children struggling Together within her refers to the brain and heart their struggle for primacy between these two is metaphorically expressed in Ezov selling his birthright to Yaakov in exchange for porridge which signifies the world we also learn that the heart and liver are the most important organs next the rabbis more deeply explore the nature of life after the resurrection identifying the elements of our prior existence that will still be present after the final redemption the relevance of this passage. Man is inclined to sacrifice long term fulfillment and well being for immediate ego gratification this is the true significance of Ezov selling his birthright to his brother we settle for bowls of porridge every day blinded by the moment caring only for our self interest at the expense of our loved ones moreover we delude ourselves with the belief that our selfish actions are really for the sake of our families this delusion is fabricated by the dark side of our nature this passage removes. The veils of illusion giving us the strength and foresight not to sell our souls when temptation for self-indulgence arises. 58 When Rav
included in this, for it is written in your womblet belly, and the brain is not in the belly but in the head, and two peoples from your bowels, and the elderly great shall serve the younger. This is a liver which is great and big and which serves the heart, as Rabbi Yehuda said, the liver receives the blood and serves it to the heart. 61 And the first came out red. Bereshit 2521 Rav Kahana explained that the liver is the first and is red. Why is it red? Because it is first to swallow. The blood Rabbi Elizer asks why is it called first because it is the first to swallow the blood from all the food the first in blood but not in creation and why is it that the great shall serve the younger because despite its being greater and bigger in size than the heart it serves the heart Rabbi Abba then asks what is the purpose of this text if not to teach the people in the world that though there will be perfection upon earth the path and nature of the world will not change Rabbi Isa. Said come and behold the liver hunts and has venison in its mouth while the heart contemplates and is dwelling in Tansibid 27 as it is written and Yaakov Kuk Padijibid 29 while thinking deep thoughts and occupying himself with the Torah 62 and Yaakov Kuk Padij in the name of Rabbi Isa Rabbi Bo said that the nature of the world never changes come and behold it is written and Yaakov Kuk Padij had nodded as in the verse they dealt had said to Shemot 1811 which was Translated into Aramaic as they thought it means that the heart thinks of and contemplates Torah which represents the knowledge of its creator thus it is written and Esau came from the field and he was faint. Bereshit 2529 It is the nature of the liver to go out hunting and swallow with its mouth if it does not find any prey it becomes tired and says to the heart before you think of the words of Torah think of eating and drinking to nourish your body this is the meaning of the verse and Esau said to Yaakov give me to swallow I pray you of that red pottage for it is my way to swallow the blood and transmit it to the other parts for I am faint without food and drink and the heart replies give me the first and choicest of whatever you swallow give me your birthright this is the meaning of sell me this day your birthright of it 31 that is swear by your desire as the heart contemplates food the liver swallows if it were not for the heart longing and thinking about food it Liver and other organs would not be able to swallow as Rabbi Yossi said this is the way of slaves who do not to eat before their master 63 Rabbi Yossi said it is later written and Yaakov gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils Bereshit 2534 what are these lentils he answers they are round as a circle and as a circle which revolves around the world does not deviate from its path so man in that time will never deviate from his although there will yet be all that is good and precious and perfect with all that the worldly habit of eating and drinking will not change 64 we learned in the Mishnah that four winds blow in the world and the Holy One blessed be he will raise one spirit to establish the body to include four spirits as it is written come from the four winds O breath or spirit Yashiskel 379 it is not written in the four but from the four winds for it will be composed of the four of them we learned that the spirit or wind is the wind that procreates the wind that eats and drinks and there is no difference between this world and the days of Mashiach is coming save the delivery from servitude to the empires alone and there is no difference between this world and the resurrection of the dead save cleanliness and the attainment of knowledge Rav Nachman added longevity section 8 the gathering of the exiles and the resurrection of the dead the rabbis here discuss the timing of the resurrection after the coming of Mashiach using Torah verses they demonstrate that it is possible to tell the difference between the timing of the resurrection of the righteous from that of the good we're told that the evil people of our world will not experience resurrection Rabbi Lazar expresses his sorrow at the thought that the vast majority of mankind will have to wait longer than the righteous although those who repent during their lives help advance the time of their own resurrection the relevance of this passage Evolving a consciousness of repentance is the first step in hastening our own redemption and eventual resurrection after the arrival of the Mashiach. The light of this passage stimulates feelings of repentance and helps hasten the arrival of the Mashiach and thus resurrection for the entire world. 65 Rav Yosef asks if the days of Mashiach is coming and the resurrection of the dead are the same. He responded, No, as we have learned that the building of the temple precedes the gathering of the exiles, which precedes the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead is the last act of all. We know this from the verse Hashem builds Jerusalem, he gathers together the outcasts of Israel, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Tehillim 1472 3. This refers to the resurrection of the dead, which is the healing of the brokenhearted and their dead. First he builds Jerusalem, then he gathers the outcasts of Israel. Last of all, he heals the brokenhearted. 66 We have learned. That the gathering of the exiles preceded the raising of the dead by forty years, as it is written, and its hawk was forty years old. What is to be made of these forty years, according to Rav Kahana? Rabbi Broca said, How many troubles, how many wars waged against the children of Israel will there be from the gathering of the exiles until the resurrection of the dead? He who escapes them is happy, as it is written, and at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who shall be found written. In the book Daniel 121, Rabbi Yehuda said that this teaches us many shall purify themselves and make themselves white and be tried. Ibn 10 Rabbi Yitzhak added, and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. Zechariah 139, during these very days there will be days when people will say, I have no pleasure in them. Kahilat 121, and from the time the troubles disappear until the resurrection of the dead, there will be forty years. 67 Rabbi Una said, Come and behold. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness because they obeyed not the voice of Hashem. Yahashua 56 in this verse it is the same. Rabbi Yosef said everything that was said is the same but for one thing at the end of forty years when the troubles pass away and the wicked are exterminated the dead the dwellers of the dust shall live. Why? Because it is written affliction shall not rise up the second time. Nechmiah 19 they had their fill with what they had after the resurrection of the dead the world will be settled as it is written on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one. Zechariah 149 68 Rabbi Lazar was sitting and was exceedingly sad. Rabbi Yahashua came before him and asked why the appearance of the candlelight of the world had become dark. He said great fear entered me for I see how the companions versed in the mission have responded on whom the spirit of saints dwells. They said that redemption will be in the sixth millennium. This was well said but I see a longer time for the dwellers of the dust who shall wait until the 408th year of the 6th millennium when they will rise for this reason the companions were stimulated by the verse that referred to the dwellers of dust as the children of Chetrachet alludes to their rising after 408 had Chetaf years as it is written in the year of the Seoval Jubilee you shall return every man to his possession Vayikra 2513 when this head Hazot shall be finished the numerical value of Hazot is 5408 as the Hay of Hazot alludes to the Hay 5000 and Zotis 408 in numerical value then you shall return every man to his possession means that the body will return to its soul which is its possession and Lot 69 Rabbi Yahashua said this length of time should not be difficult for you as we have learned that there are three classes the completely righteous the completely wicked and the average the completely righteous will rise with the resurrection of the dead of the land of Israel a few years earlier than the 408th year namely at the 40th year after the gathering of the exiles in the end everybody will rise at the 408th year of the 6th millennium who will merit this length of time he who will keep the precepts at that time for that reason I am sad 70 he said to him Rabbi we have studied the verse let there be light Bereshit 12 which means let there be secret because light is the secret of redemption and the numerical value of or light is rise secret thus the verse let there be light hints that the time of redemption will be a secret unknown to all men Rabbi Lazar Benarak hinted that he disagreed with this long period again he said that through repentance everyone will rise from the dead early Rabbi Yahashua said unless you said so we would not have left an opening for those waiting daily for redemption as it is written as store of salvation Yeshua 336 What is the salvation? It alludes to those who seek salvation daily. If redemption is tied to a specific time, how can it be expected daily? This assuredly depends upon repentance. When they repent, they will be redeemed. And 40 years after redemption, the resurrection of the dead will come. As was said, 71. He asked him, What is the opinion of Rabbi Lazar who said that it depended on repentance? How did he know this? He answers from the verse, And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Daniel 122. It is understood by those who sleep that only some will rise. These are the righteous who repented while they were alive, who will rise
172 and there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Bershi 261 Rabbi Bay opened the discussion with the verse while the king was reclining at his board by Spikenard sent forth its fragrance. Sure Hashirim 112 we learned that the righteous will pass through four years and four times each different from the other during the first knowledge will increase in the world and the righteous will conceive what they have not conceived in this. World as we have learned from Rabbi Pinches in the future the perception of the righteous will be greater than that of the ministering angels as it is written as the waters cover the sea. Yeshaya 119 during the second time you shall be occupied end of Midrash Hanilam section 9 and the boy's river he relished his venison the discussion moves to a more profound understanding of the metaphor of Ezov as a hunter even in the womb Yaakov was drawn to the creator while Ezov was drawn to idolatry as a cunning hunter Ezov stole the minds of men and led them astray so that they would rebel against the creator as the rabbis probed the issue of why Yitzhak did not know these things about his son we discovered that the Sheshana wanted only Yaakov to be blessed with the spirit of the creator which is precisely what transpired the relevance of this passage the verses pertaining to Ezov's coercing men into idolatry function as a kind of spiritual Homeopathy just as the cure for a deadly snake bite resides within the venom of the snake the remedy for strengthening our consciousness against temptations of the material world resides within the verses that speak these matters we also draw the light of the Shechina into our lives through the merit of Yaakov 73 and the boys grew Bershi 2527 this refers to the side of Abraham the right side which is Chesedim and which caused them to grow his merit supported them for he was teaching them the precepts as it is written for I know him that he will command E.T. his children Bershi 1819 the particle E.T. means that Yaakov and Ezab are included among his sons therefore the explanation of and the boys grew is that they grew in holiness only afterwards Esav became corrupted Rabbi Lazar disagreed he believes that each went his own way one toward faith and the other towards idolatry 74 so it was while still in Ripka's womb each went toward his own side when she was Performing good deeds or passing near a place that is favorable to the precepts of Torah Yaakov was glad and struggled to come out and when she walked past a place of idolatry the wicked one struggled to come out this has already been explained for that reason when they were born into the world each was drawn to the place he deserved therefore it is written and the boys grew and Ezob was a cunning hunter which means that he led people astray to rebel against Hashem 75 and its hawk. Loved Ezob for he relished his venison Bershi 2428 this verse has been explained here it is written a cunning hunter a man of the field while elsewhere it is written he was a mighty hunter Bershi 109 there it means that he deluded men and led them astray to rebel against Hashem here it means the same thus a man of the field is one who robbed and murdered people and Esav said he went to the field to pray as it is written of its hawk and its hawk went out to meditate in the field. Bershi 2463 he hunted and cheated its hawk through his mouth as it is written he relished his venison lit there was venison in his mouth he was called a man of the field because his lot was not in a populated place but in a desolate place in the open wilderness in the field thus he was called a man of the field 76 you may ask why its hawk did not know of all the wicked deeds of Ezov as the Shechinah was with him and he should have known it through the Holy Spirit for without the Shechinah how could he have blessed Yaakov when he did assuredly the Shechinah dwelt in his house and was with him always but the Shechinah did not inform him of that because Yaakov was to be blessed only with the knowledge of the Holy One blessed be he and so it had to be for when Yaakov came before his father the Shechinah came with him and then its hawk saw in his mind that Yaakov was worthy of being blessed and that he would be blessed by the approval of the Shechinah. Section 10 and Yaakov cooked the pottage Rabbi Shimon discourses on the character of Yaakov and the fact that Ezov despised his birthright the Torah tells us that its hawk bestowed numerous blessings upon his son Yaakov all the while thinking it was Ezov although its hawk did not know Ezov's evil side this was in order to preserve the purity of his blessing of Yaakov however Yaakov did know about Ezov and he dealt with his brother in a manner that enabled him to avoid defilement. The discussion also describes the exact manner in which Yaakov embodied judgment mercy and subtlety the relevance of this passage despite his highly spiritual nature Yaakov was cunning enough to receive his father's blessing for he was fully aware of the enemy he confronted in his brother Ezov the dark side of our nature is cunning and sly endlessly deceiving us into making wrong choices we must be as cunning and clever as our evil inclination if we remain passive and complacent are. Negative traits will control us summoning the shrewdness of Yaakov through the spiritual influences of this passage imbues us with artful and deft intellectual power to outweet the other side. 77 Come and behold Rabbi Shimon was sitting with the other friends when his son Rabbi Lazar appeared. The friend said to Rabbi Shimon we have an important question to ask you concerning Yaakov and Ezov. Why was Yaakov unwilling to give Ezov a pottage of lentils unless he sold him his birthright in? Addition Ezov said to its hawk his father for he has supplanted me these two times. Bershi 2736 How can Yaakov be deceived? Esav 78 He responded now you deserve a whipping because you believe Ezov and lied about Yaakov's words. The scripture bears witness that Yaakov was a plain man. Bershi 2527 which means that he cannot cheat. Also it is written you will show truth to Yaakov. Misha 720 This was the situation concerning Yaakov and Ezov even before Ezov detested his birthright. And he asked Yaakov to take the birthright without payment, thus it is as written, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way, thus Ezov despised the birthright. Bershi 2534 79 of the verse, and Yaakov cooked a pottage, and Ezov came from the field, and he was faint. Rabbi Lazar explained that, and Yaakov cooked refers to the morning for Abraham who had died on that day, and Yaakov cooked round lentils which have no mouth. This alludes to the mourners who are without a mouth. He asks, but should not it have been written, and it's hot cooked the pottage, since he and not Yaakov was the mourner. He answers, Yaakov cooked the pottage because Yaakov knew the origin of Ezov and the side he cleaved to, therefore he cooked red dishes, namely red lentils, for this dish breaks the power and might of the red blood and can break the power and might of Esav, who is the secret of the red blood, as it is written, and the first came out red. Bershi 2525 for that dish bite. Selling Yaakov his birthright, Ezov became a slave instantly. Yaakov knew that for the one goat that the children of Israel sacrificed on Yom Kippur to his level, namely to Azazel into the wilderness. Vayikra 1610, the secret of the Samael, the minister of Esav, he becomes a slave to his descendants and will not accuse them. And because of the level of wisdom of Ezov, Yaakov dealt wisely with Ezov everywhere so that Ezov was unable to rule and was submissive. Yaakov was not defiled by him but ruled over him. 81, we do not accept this paragraph for it does not belong in the discussion. 82, Rabbi Yehuda said that this should have been true of Laban as well because he was also a sorcerer as it is written, I have learned by signs that Hashem has blessed me for your sake. Bershi 3027, therefore Yaakov was deceitful toward him and although Yaakov was a plain and whole man, he was merciful with whomever he had to be merciful with, he was strict in judgment and deceitful when Necessary for he consisted of two parts Chesed and judgment for Yaakov is the secret of the central column which comprises the two columns Chesed and Gvira it is written of him with the merciful you will show yourself merciful and with the perverse you will show yourself subtle Tehillim 1826 which means that with the merciful he dealt on the side of Chesed and with the perverse on the side of strict judgment all as it ought to be section 11 and there was a famine in the land the rabbis discuss the creator's testing of the righteous and his treatment of the wicked there is a delay in executing judgment against the wicked in order to give them time to repent the creator we're told test the righteous in order to help them lift up their heads the discussion shows how this applies to Adam Avraham Noach and Itzhak and Rabbi Shimon expounds on the need for an understanding of the relationship between soul body and the Shechinah we learn that it is only when the soul is reunited with Shechinah that is truly worthy the relevance of this passage a child learns to walk by falling down and standing up again measured against a lifetime of walking this period of continual stumbling is relatively short similarly the hardships and afflictions in our lives are learning opportunities they are sent to us to help us lear
eating from the tree of knowledge, then the Holy One blessed be he judged him. 85 Even then the Holy One blessed be he did not judge him as harshly as he deserved. That is according to the verse. For on the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Verse 217 He refrained from wrath and let him be among the living for one day. That is the day of the Holy One blessed be he, which is 1,000 years as it is written for 8,000 years in your sight are but like yesterday when it is. Past Tehillim 904 minus the 70 years that he gave to King David who had no life of his own therefore he lived 930 years namely 1000 years minus 70 86 similarly the Holy One blessed be he does not judge man according to his evil deeds which he continually does for if he did so the world would not have survived but the Holy One blessed be he refrains from wrath with the righteous and the wicked with the wicked he is even more forbearing than with the righteous so that they may repent completely and exist in this world and in the world to come as it is written as I live says Adonai Elohim I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live Yeshiskel 3311 which means to live in this world and in the world to come for that reason he is always forbearing another reason is that good stock may issue from them as Abraham was begotten of Terak who issued good stock in good origin and portion in the world 87 but the Holy One blessed be he is always strict with the righteous in every deed they do because he knows they will not turn away neither to the right nor the left he constantly tests them not for his own sake does the Holy One blessed be he tests them as he knows their desire and the firmness of their faith and has no need of trying them he tries them only to lift up their heads to give them confidence as they earn their merits through these experiences 88 the Holy One blessed be he behaved similarly toward Abraham as it is written that the Elohim did test Abraham Bershi 221 what is meant by test Hebnesa it means the raising of the banner Hebnesa as it is written lift up the standard Yeshua 6210 and set up the standard Yermea 46 he raised his standard over the whole world and for this for the test at the sacrifice the Holy One blessed be he raised the banner of Abraham before everybody's eyes as it is written did test Abraham thus the Holy One blessed be he in order to lift the standard of the righteous tries them so they will lift up their heads throughout the world 89 tries the righteous Tehillim 115 what is the reason thereof according to Rabbi Shimon it is because the Holy One blessed be he wishes for the righteous as it is written but it pleased Hashem to crush him by disease Yeshua 5310 this has already been explained the Holy One blessed be he wishes for the soul and not the body because the soul resembles the supernal soul namely the Shechina and the body is not worthy of being united with the Shechina above us although the shape of the body is in the image of the supernal secret that is although the body is drawn from the Shechina namely Malchut nevertheless it is not worthy of being united with her 90 come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he wishes to illuminate the soul of a man he crushes the body so that the soul will govern as long as the soul is with the body they are equal and the soul cannot Rule after the body is crushed, the soul becomes powerful. What is the meaning of the verse? Tries the righteous Tehillim 115. It is as is written, a tried stone, Yeshua 28 16. In the same way, he tries the righteous, which means that he strengthens him by this tried stone, which is a precious cornerstone. So does he try the righteous 91. But the wicked and him who loves violence, his soul hates Tehillim 115. What is the meaning of his soul? And Nefesh hates. Could it possibly be that it alludes to the Holy One? Blessed be he whose Nefesh hates the wicked, for the word Nefesh is not appropriate for the Holy One. Blessed be he. The explanation is that the very level upon which all souls depend, Malchut hates the Nefesh of that wicked man, for it does not want it the soul to cleave to IT in this world or in the world to come. For that reason, it is written, but the wicked and him who loves violence, his soul hates. Another explanation of his soul hates is as it is written, Adonai. Elohim has sworn by his Nefesh Amos 68 which means that the word Nefesh is used in relation to Hashem if so then the explanation is simply that the soul of Hashem hates the wicked and him who loves violence for that reason he tries the righteous for he loves him 92 come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he created Adam he commanded him not to eat of the tree of knowledge in order to benefit him he gave him wisdom so he would ascend through the graves to the Holy One blessed be he when he descended he saw the desires of the evil inclination and clung to it thereby forgetting all that he beheld of the supernal glory of his master 93 of Noshit his first written Nosh was a just man and perfect Bear sheet 69 and he descended and saw strong wine that was one day old and not clear as it was full of drinks he drank from it became drunk and was uncovered as it is written and he drank of the wine and was drunk and he was uncovered within his tent Bear sheet 921 94 then Abraham was elevated with wisdom and beheld the glory of his master. Subsequently it is written and there was famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt. Bear 1210 and, and Abram went up out of Egypt. Bear 131 and was elevated to the great he had at the beginning. He came in peace and went in peace. 95 and then it's of whom it is written and there was a famine in the land. Bear 261 and it's went to Gerar from there. He later ascended peacefully and so all the righteous are tested by the Holy One. Blessed be he to raise their heads in this world and in the world to come. Section 12 and he said she is my sister. Here the discussion explains why Abraham and Itzhak replied as above when they were asked about their wives. This episode is linked to the Shechinah, the divine presence of creator in the physical realm. The dual meaning of the word sister is revealed as an allusion to the patriarch's own connection to the Shechina, which is the source of human happiness and protection, the rabbis further discuss the nature and whereabouts of the dwelling place of the Shechina, which resides both in their wives and in the holy land. The relevance of this passage, the Shechina can only dwell within us, offering protection and fulfillment when we are in an appreciative and joyful state of mind. The moment a person feels depressed, negative, or victimized, the Shechina departs a positive state of mind and appreciation. Is summoned forth in this passage, thus drawing the Shechina into our lives. This light also serves to enrich our marital relationships. 96 And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister. Bear she 267 That is just like Abraham said, She is my sister, referring to the Shechina, for the Shechina was with its hawk and his wife, and he said of the Shechina, She is my sister, as it is written, Say to wisdom, You are my sister, Mishlei 74. Thus he was strengthened by. The Shechina and said, She is my sister, Abraham and Itzhak deserve to say of the Shechina, She is my sister, this is assuredly so because of the verse in which Zeir and Pen said to the Shechina, My sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, Sher Hashirim 52, Abraham and Itzhak were a chariot to Zeir and Pen and were therefore worthy like Zeir and Pen of saying about the Shechina, She is my sister, thus the righteous were strengthened by the Holy One, blessed be he that is they became a chariot to him. 97 And it came to pass when he had been there a long time with Ribka his wife, Bershi 268, It is said with Hebiti Ribka his wife, precisely which alludes to the Shechina that was with Ribka because Et with as we know is the name of the Shechina. Another explanation asks if we could possibly conceive of Itzhak performing his marital duties during the daytime, we have learned that the children of Israel are holy and abstain from cohabitation in the daytime, therefore how could it's hot who was holy cohabit during the day 98 he answers assuredly Abimelech was wise and looked at the wisdom of the stars that is called the window as it is written here out at a window Bershi 268 and elsewhere the mother of Sisera looked out at a window showed him 528 as a window there refers to astrology so the window here refers to astrology and he saw there that it was not as it's said but that he surely was sporting with her and she was his wife then Abimelech called it's hot Bershi 269 Rabbi Yossi said that it would have befitted Abimelech to do this to it's and take his wife as he did to Abraham were it not for the holy one blessed be he who reproved him earlier for what he did to Abraham saying behold you are a dead man because of the woman Bershi 2399 come and behold it is written because I thought surely the fear of Elohim is not in this place Bershi 2011 according to Rabbi Abba this is the reason why he said she is my sister. He wanted to cleave to the Shechina as it is written say to wisdom namely the Shechina you are my sister why because they had no faith in them for if they had faith he would not have needed that but because they had no faith he said she is my sister he therefore said because I thought surely the fear of Elohim is not in this place the fear of Elohim is faith 100 Rabbi Lazar
This man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Verse 2611 Come and behold how long had the Holy One blessed be he refrained from avenging the wicked for as a result of the good Abimelech did with the first patriarchs the children of Israel did not rule over the Philistines until generations later Abimelech did well to act properly toward Itzhak as he said to Abraham Behold my land is before you dwell where it pleases you. Verse 2015 The saying also encompasses the descendants of Abraham this is why he kept his word with Itzhak as well and Rabbi Lazar praises him for keeping his promise 102 Rabbi Yehuda said woe to the wicked whose generosity is not complete come and behold Ephron first said my lord hear me the field I give you and the cave that is in it Beersheet 2311 later he said 400 shekels Ibit 14 and then and Abraham weighed to Ephron current money with the merchant Ibit 16 here too it is written at first what he said to Abraham behold my land is before you which includes Itzhak and he said to Itzhak go from us for you are much mightier than we Beersheet 2616 Rabbi Lazar said to him this is a benevolence Abimelech had for Itzhak he took nothing from him and sent him away with his money and possessions then he went after him to make a covenant with him 103 and Rabbi Lazar said that Itzhak did well because he knew the secret of wisdom he strove and dug a well of water that is he fixed the nook called the well of water so as to be properly invigorated by faith which is the nook of Abraham also strove and dug a well of water Yaakov found it completed and settled by it everybody went after it and strove by it so as to be strengthened by the true faith as is proper 104 presently the children of Israel are strengthened by the well of water the secret of the nook according to the secret of keeping the commandments of the Torah namely every day a man is strengthened and enveloped by the commandment of the tzitzit fringes as he also is by the tefillin he puts on his head and arm this is as it should be for they are the supernal mystery for the holy one blessed be he dwells with the man who is crowned by tefillin and clothed with the fringes all is in the secret of high faith namely the nook meaning that she is amended by the precepts a man follows 105 therefore whoever does not wear the fringes and is not invigorated by the tefillin daily appears as if faith does not dwell with him the fear of his master is removed from him and his prayer is no proper prayer for this reason the fathers were strengthened by the supreme faith since within the supernal well dwells whole faith namely the corrected mukva section 14 and he called the name of it Riko but here the rabbis expound meaning of this farah through a discussion of the world to come it is said that the Torah is more mundane versus possess hidden meanings pertaining to the spiritual processes that the patriarchs endured in upper worlds with this insight we see that the deeds of the righteous are performed in order to preserve our world this is why they are able to draw down the Shechina into our lower realm the relevance of this passage if we are unaware of the meaning and metaphysical power concealed in the Torah seemingly uninteresting verses we are prevented from deriving immense light and strength from Torah study this passage offers us the opportunity to ignite Sparks of light by connecting to these veiled meanings and so doing we tilt our own actions towards the side of righteousness thus helping to sustain this world by our very existence 106 and he removed from there and dug another well Beersheet 2622 Rabbi she opened the discussion with the verse and Hashem shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and make strong your bones Yeshayah 5811 this verse had already been explained but by this verse the faithful were strengthened for it promises in the world to come and Hashem shall guide you continually in this world and the world to come and Hashem shall guide you he asks because he said and Hashem shall guide you why add the word continually had tamed it for this hints at the daily offering let continue made at dust that receives its strength from underneath its hawk's arm as it corresponds to the service of Minja that its hawk composed who is the secret of the illumination of the left it is the portion of the world to come, namely the nukva that receives the portion of Chakma from Israel, Saba and Tabuna called the world to come. How do we know that Hashem shall guide you continually refers to the illumination of the left from David as it is written, He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Tehillim 233, just as the word lead spoken by David means the illumination of the left as it is written in the paths of righteousness, which is the name of the nukva. When she shines from the left here too, when it says guide, it alludes to the illumination of the left 107 and satisfy your soul in drought. Also, brightness, Yeshayah 5811 refers to the shining lamp, namely Zeir and the secret of the illumination of the right, the secret of Shesedim that all the souls delight in and take pleasure in beholding the verse ends and make strong your bones, if at the end does not suit the beginning for it, the soul of the righteous I satisfied as said before. And satisfy your soul in brightness which speaks about the nefesh and neshama of the righteous why does it now say and make strong your bones which talks about the bones of the body but he answers that this has already been explained it refers to the resurrection of the dead the fact that the holy one blessed be he will revive the dead and fix man's bones as they were at first in a whole body and light will be added from the shining lamp so the soul will be illuminated together with the body in a complete whole this way it refers to the soul of the righteous to which the holy one blessed be he will give a whole body in which to be clothed for eternity 108 for this reason it is written you shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water Yeshua 5811 he asks what is this water garden and he answers it's supernal water that is the abundant yield of and never ceases its eternal flow this garden malchute always lakes its thirst from it a spring of water refers to that river which emerges and flows out of Eden which waters never cease flowing 109 he then explained the difference between the water garden and the spring of water come and behold the well of living water is the supreme secret which is bound within the faith which is Malchut and she is a cistern from where the spring of water and a cistern that is filled by that spring of water these two grades are one namely male and female properly as one 110 come and behold the spring of water and the cistern are one together they are called the well for the spring is derived from Aleph and Malchut is a cistern had bore together they form the well had BER for the spring flows into Malchut and never ceases so the cistern is always filled and whoever looks at the well namely at Malchut looks on the supernal mystery of faith namely Bunna and this is the reasoning behind the labor of the patriarchs who strove to dig a well of water in the supernal secret Bunna there must be no Division between the source which is the spring of water and the cistern itself for all is one 111 then and he called the name of it Rikov at Bershi 2622 for this reason its springs will spread on all sides that is to the right and the left which are Chakma and Chesedim as it is written so will your spring be dispersed abroad and streams of water will flow in the broad places had Rikov at Mishle 516 for this reason he called the name of it Rikov at 112 Rabbi Shimon began with the verse wisdom's cry aloud in the streets she utters her voice in the squares had Rikov at Mishle 120 this verse contains a deep mystery why is it written in the plural that is wisdoms and not wisdom he said they are the upper wisdom Chakma of Eric Enpin and the lower wisdom that is included and dwells within the upper one the lower Chakma namely the Nukba 113 cry aloud in the streets come and behold the upper Chakma of Eric Enpin is the most concealed of all it is not to be known or revealed as it is written man cannot know its price CO 2813 for when it was diffused in order to illuminate it shown on the secret of the world to come this world to come was created from it Eric Enpin as we learned that the world to come was created by the Yud in which Chakma was covered and they became one with the head of Eric Enpin when everything was adorned with the secret of the world to come everything that is joyfully luminous everything is silent never heard. Outside 114 it wanted to illuminate further thus from this place came fire water and wind as we have learned and they became one voice that went out and was heard from it on it assumed the aspect of out for inside it is silent soundless never to be heard now that the secret is heard it is called out from here on it behooves a man to improve his deeds and ask namely to pray and elevate female water and draw Chakma this is like asking for rain 115 in the squares had recovered. He asks what is the meaning of squares he replied this is the firmament where all the stars are shining is it a in which are suspended the entire mokin of male and female and the souls which are called stars it is a spring whose waters fail not Yeshayah 5811 as it is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden Beersheet 210 it is called Rikovit there she utters her voice the upper bunna and the lower Malchut and all is one 116 for that reason Solomon said prepare your work outside and make it fit for yourself in the field Mishle 2427 
that is to build and maintain the Mukbakal world as it is written for the upright shall dwell in the land Mishlei 221 which should be read as cause to dwell which means that they will draw the Shechinah called land upon the lower beings as was already explained section 15 his eyes were dim so that he could not see Rabbi Shimon and his son Rabbi Lazer discuss differences in the eyesight of Abraham Itzhak and Yaakov as they grow older and the significance of this for our realm of Malchut and the supernal mysteries of patriarchs were connected to left column which denotes judgment and darkness this is the secret meaning behind the concept of blindness in the Torah Itzhak embodied a complete connection to the left column therefore we are told that he is totally blind Yaakov's connection to both the right and left columns is indicated by his only partial blindness the relevance of this passage our physical bodies are directly Affected by our connection to the light during our lives, these effects can be both positive and negative. Illness and health are merely expressions of how we balance the right and left columns, sharing and receiving throughout our lives. We are often judgmental left column during moments when we should be merciful right column, and vice versa. The wisdom to balance these two columns is awakened within us. 118. And it came to pass that when its hawk was old, Bereshit 271, Rabbi Shimon said, It is written, and Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Bereshit 15. This verse had already been explained. Nevertheless, come and behold, all the actions that the Holy One blessed be he performs are true, and in the secret of the upper world, and all the words of the Torah are words of faith, which is the secret of the Nukh and supernal mysteries which illuminate it as they should. 119. Come and behold, its hawk did not have the merit of Abraham, whose eyes were not. Blinded or dimmed here, however, is a supernal secret, the secret of faith, for we have learned that an Elohim called the light day refers to Abraham, the light of day, the secret of the right column, whose light grows stronger as the day advances, the secret of the light of Shesedim 120. Thus it is written, and Abraham was old, advanced in age, Bereshit 241, that is in the shining lights of Shesedim, and he is old as it is written, that shines ever more brightly until the height of noonday. Mishlei 418, therefore, it is written of him, and Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. This is its hot who is dark and gets darker to receive the night within him, therefore, when he grew older, it is written, and it came to pass that when its hot was old, and his eyes were dim so that he could not see Bereshit 271, for he became completely dark, assuredly, he had to be completely dark to cleave well to his grade 121. Rabbi Lazar, his son, kissed his hands and said this. Is well, Abraham shines on the side of his great and its hawk is darkened on the side of his great. But why did Yaakov grow darker as it is written now? The eyes of Israel were dim lit heavy from age. Bear she 4810. He answers, Assuredly, it is as I said, for it is written heavy and not dim as was written of its hawk. It is written from age, not his age. From age is to be interpreted as the age of its hawk, for he included both Abraham and its hawk. Therefore, on the side of its hawk, his eyes were heavy so that he could not see, but not properly. But he was not absolutely blind, but its hawk's eyes were completely dim and it became darkness for night, which is the Nukba cloak to him, and it was fulfilled. And the darkness he called night. Section 16. And he said, Behold, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. The events leading to its hawk's mistaken identity, blessing of Yaakov, are discussed by Rabbi Lazar as he expounds upon the significance. Of trust in the story of the fiery furnace in the story three righteous people are tossed into a fire the men possess unshakable trust in the creator and have no regard for their survival or destruction for this reason these righteous men miraculously avoid injury through the story Rabbi Lazar shows in great depth that only complete trust in the light of the creator can bring forth divine assistance there must be no expectation or desire for a specific result as is written according to his need we're told of the importance of being prepared and of dwelling on the name of the creator and of how these qualities are intricately related to Torah study such study we learn requires a profound intention to extol the creator our efforts must be for the sake of the whole world not for ourselves so the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the creator the rabbis then return to the story of the blessing its significance for future generations and its relation to both the Shechina and this mundane realm of Malchut, the relevance of this passage, people may unknowingly embark on a spiritual path for selfish reasons. They have hidden expectations of self-serving gain, though this is not always their conscious intention. It's the reality we can know if our desires and efforts are pure. When we ask the life for what we need and not just what we want, we then trust in the spiritual path, regardless of any tests and obstacles we encounter. These verses increase our level of trust in the Creator. They invoke certainty in times of distress, strength during times of strife. We can embrace whatever life brings, certain of the spiritual purpose behind it. One hundred and twenty-two. He called Esau his eldest son. This means that he was included within strict judgment, which is the aspect of ESAV. Therefore, he called ESAV and he said, "Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death." Rabbi Lazer opened the discussion with the verse: "Happy is the man whose strength is in you." Tehillim eight hundred and forty-six. Happy is the man. Who is strengthened by the Holy One, blessed be he, and puts his trust in him. 123. This trust could be interpreted as the trust that Chanani, Missal, and Ezra put in him when they said, Behold, our Elohim, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. He can deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and out of your hand. King Daniel 317, meaning that they trusted that the Holy One, blessed be he, would surely save them from the fiery furnace. He says that this is not so. Only come and see if he would not save them and be with them. It would come to pass that the name of the Holy One, blessed be he, would not be sanctified before the eyes of everyone, as they said. But when they realized they did not speak properly, they spoke again, saying, But if he does not be it known to you, King of 18, that I ask whether he will save them or not, let it be known to you that we will not worship an image. It was made known to them by Yeshua, whom they heard and believed that the Holy One, blessed be he, would not be. With them to save them, and he told them that so that they would surrender their souls and be rewarded. Then they spoke again, saying, "Be it known to you, King 124, a man should not assume and think the Holy One blessed be He will save us, or that the Holy One blessed be He will do such and such for me. However, it behooves man to place his trust in the Holy One blessed be He to help him according to his need, as long as he strives to keep the precepts of Torah and to walk the path of truth. When a man wishes to be purified, he is surely helped, and he should trust the Holy One blessed be He to help him in this, and he should put his trust in Him and not in another. Therefore, it is written, whose strength is in you, and whose heart are your highways. Tehillim 846 means that it behooves him to prepare his heart as fit, so that no strange thoughts will come into it, but to be as amended way to pass through wherever one needs to either right or left. Thus, whether the Holy One blessed be He does. Good for him or not, his heart should be ready and prepared and not harbor strange thoughts in any case whatsoever. 125. Another explanation for happy is the man whose strength is in you. Strength as in Hashem gives strength to his people. Tehillim 2911 means the Torah and whose strength is in you means that it is incumbent on a man to be occupied in studying Torah for the namesake of the Holy One. Blessed be he, namely the Sheshanah that is called name for whoever is occupied in it. Torah but does not care for its name would have been better never born what is meant by the verse in whose heart are your highways have mesalot it is as in the verse extol have solo him who rides upon the clouds yah is his name tehillim 685 which refers both to extolling the rider on the clouds and the highways in their hearts this means that when he studies the Torah he should be intent upon extolling the holy one blessed be he and glorifying and extolling him throughout the world thus studying Torah for its own sake name is for those in whose heart are your highways this means that one must be intent when studying Torah to draw the bounty of knowledge for one and for the whole world so that the name of the holy one blessed be he will grow in the world as it is written for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Hashem Yeshayah 119 and Hashem shall be king over all the earth Zechariah 149 126 come and behold Yaakov all that he did was for the sake of the holy one blessed be he, and for that reason the Holy One blessed be he was with him always by that the Shechinah never moved from him for when it's hot called for Esau his son Yaakov was not there the Shechinah told this to Rivka who informed Yaakov 127 Rabbi Yossi said come and behold if heaven forbid Esau would have been blessed at that time Yaakov would not have ruled over the world but stayed heaven forbid in exile always but it was decreed by the Holy One
wine by this he hints that he served him wine from afar according to Rabbi Lazar this means that he brought him wine in which there is complete joy that is the wine which cheers Elohim and man showed him 913 to gladden its hot for he needed cheering as the side of the Levites needs cheering to with the left side for since judgments take hold of the left side therefore sadness dwells in it and there is need of heartening all those who are drawn from it the Levites and its hot as well therefore he brought him wine and he drank section 17 the best clothes of her eldest son Ezov in this section the rabbis continue their analysis of events leading to its hot's mistaken blessing of Yaakov they explain the origin of Ezov's clothing which was given by Ripka to Yaakov in truth its hot was not deceived into believing Yaakov was actually Ezov Yaakov's clothing radiated ascent direct from the garden of Eden its hot blessed Yaakov because of it. Garments emitted this holy aroma not because he was deceived its hot realized that this fragrance could only accompany someone worthy of the blessing thus we learn that Yaakov embodied the power and soul of Adam Rabbi Lazar describes the relationship of Yaakov to Adam in terms of Yaakov's beauty this also illuminates his relationship to the realm of the relevance of this passage Adam originally wore the garments mentioned above in the garden of Eden thus the garments divine scent. When Yaakov wore them Yaakov we are told is the embodiment of Adam and his original clothes are returned to him by Ripka the Zohar is evolving a lesson concerning a natural law all things eventually return to their rightful owners nothing that truly belongs to us can ever really leave us whatever we lose we never really had this enlightened view of life is awakened within us the scent of the garden of Eden is infused within us so that we emit this fragrance light in our lives wherever we Go people around us will sense this light 131 and Ripka took the best clothes of her eldest son Ezov Beershi 2715 these are the garments Ezov took from Nimrod they are the precious garments from Adam which came to the hands of Nimrod who used them when he hunted as it is written he was a mighty hunter before Hashem Beershi 109 and Ezov went into the field where he fought with and killed Nimrod removing the garments from him this is the meaning of and Ezov came the field and he was faint Beershi 2529 it has already been explained why it is here written and he was faint and elsewhere for my soul faints before the slayers here may 431 these are analogous there it is written faint to refer to killing here too there is killing because ESAV murdered Nimrod 132 Ezov hid these garments with Ripka and wore them when he went hunting on the day when it's hot sent for him to receive the blessings he did not take them to the field and was therefore late when Ezov wore them they put forth no scent at all but when Yaakov wore them the lost object was restored as they returned to the aspect of Adam for the beauty of Yaakov was the beauty of Adam they therefore returned to their place and emitted fragrance 133 Rabbi Yossi said you say that Yaakov's beauty was the beauty of Adam how could this be we learned that the apple of Adam's heel eclipsed the orb of the sun could you say that for Yaakov Rabbi Lazar replied assuredly before Adam sinned no creature could behold his beauty but after he sinned his beauty changed his stature diminished and he was a hundred cubits high but before the sin his height was from earth to heaven the beauty of Yaakov was like the beauty of Adam after he sinned come and behold Adam's beauty is a mystery on which supernal faith by stems that is he achieved the light of Bina and there attained this beauty of this the scripture says and let the beauty of Adonai our Elohim be upon us Tehillim 90, 17, as the light of Bina is called beauty it is also written to behold the beauty of Hashem Tehillim 274 this is assuredly the beauty of Yaakov that is he achieved the light of Bina as did Adam and all is in the supernal mystery 134 and he smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him Beershi 2727 come and behold it is not written and he smelled the smell of the garments but the smell of his garments this is according to the verse who covers himself with light as with a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain Tehillim 1042 another explanation is that once Yaakov wore them they emitted an aroma as long as its hot did not smell the aroma of the garments he did not bless him but then when they emitted an aroma he knew that the wearer was worthy of being blessed for if he did not deserve to be blessed no holy aroma would be put forth this is the meaning of the verse and he smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him 135 and said see the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which Hashem has blessed. Beershi 2727 the meaning of and said is not clear for it is not known who said it. Some say it is the Shechina. Some say it was its hot who said like the smell of a field which Hashem has blessed. He asks what is this field and he answers this is a field of apple trees namely the Mukba called the field of holy apples which the supernal patriarchs Jesus, Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and support and cultivate. Section 18 in my distress I cried to Hashem and he heard me. We learn why Yaakov's cunning in receiving its hot's blessing was actually necessary to save the world from the same serpent that had earlier caused the fall of Adam. The rabbis next give counsel on the meaning for all Israel of the multiple blessings given to Yaakov and those given to Esau both for the present and for the time of the coming of Mashiach. The blessings given to Yaakov are explained with respect to their Meaning throughout history these blessings act as portals through which particular blends of energy flow to mankind at the appropriate periods we also learn the central meaning of Yaakov for Israel in a spiritual historical context Yaakov as the embodiment of Adam encompasses the entire story of man Yaakov represents the complete drama of human existence represented by the sphere of Tiferet specifically this refers to the bringing together in one place of all that has happened and that will happen from the time of Adam to the final coming of the Mashiach the section concludes with an apportioning of the blessings each one in its appropriate time in relation to the history of Israel and the coming of the end of the correction of the souls of man the relevance of this passage through the story of the children of Israel we learn that the threads of the Torah are spiritually woven into the history of the world we secure a powerful connection to Yaakov and in turn to the Ancient and timeless blessings that we presently need in order to hasten the final redemption we awaken our awareness of the role and significance our lives play in the overall spiritual plan 136 therefore the Elohim give you of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Beershi 2728 Rabbi Abba said this verse has already been explained nevertheless come and look at the verse a song of ascent in my distress I cried to Hashem and he heard me tell him 1201. How many songs and praises did David say before the Holy One blessed be he all in order to fix his grade the secret of the Mukba and to make himself a name namely to draw Mokin upon it as it is written and David got him a name to Shmuel 813 the song he said when he saw what Yaakov accomplished that he was answered and received the blessings he said in my distress I cried to Hashem and he heard me if it were not for Yaakov who received the blessings the secret of the whole Mokin to Construct the Mukba David could not have made her a name 137 Rabbi Lazar said it was Yaakov who sang the song when his father said to him come near I pray you that I may feel you my son whether you are really my son Ezov or not Beershi 2721 then was Yaakov in great distress for he feared that his father will recognize and know him and it is written and he recognized him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Ezov's hands so he blessed him Beershi 2723 so he said in my distress I cried to Hashem and he heard me 138 deliver my soul Hashem from lying lips from a deceitful tongue Tehillim 1202 this is the portion where Ezov is namely the serpent who has lying lips what are the lying lips of his grade when the serpent brought curses upon the world by inciting Adam to eat of the tree of knowledge he brought them deceitfully and crookedly section 19 the blessings the Zohar expounds upon the blessings that were Originally intended for Ezov but deceitfully appropriated by Yaakov like all stories in scripture this one is imbued with deeper meaning in truth the episode of the blessings concerns the establishment of the universal spiritual system that mankind would utilize in its quest for transformation the patriarchs represent the various spiritual components that comprise the system at this particular point in its development the critical moment is at hand the battle for dominion over the dimension of physicality is being determined thus we learn that Yaakov stealing of the blessing away from his brother Ezov signifies the victory of the light over the forces of darkness the Zohar then explicates upon the secret behind the blessing some blessings are to be utilized in the age before the end of days while other blessings are designated for the final redemption the relevance of this passage the power to triumph over dark forces within us and those in our midst is given to us through
have blessed him moreover he shall be blessed 141 for that reason Yaakov behaved with cunning and guile and brought blessings on Yaakov who resembled Adam that were taken from a serpent of the lying lips who talked and acted deceitfully in order to incite Adam to eat from the tree of knowledge and bring curses upon the world for that reason Yaakov behaved with cunning and misled his father so as to bring blessings upon the world and snatch from the serpent what he withheld from it world that is the blessings he withheld from the world this was measure for measure of which it is written for he loved cursing and it came to him and he delighted not in blessings and it was far from him Tehillim 10,917 about him the verse reads you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field Bear she 314 he stayed accursed forevermore and Yaakov came and took the blessings from him 142 from the time of Adam Yaakov was destined to take from the serpent all these blessings and the serpent was to remain accursed never to be released from them and David inspired by the Holy Spirit asked what shall be given to you or what shall be done to you you false tongue sharp arrows of the mighty Tehillim 1,203 to 4 what causes this evil serpent to bring curses upon the world when he is as they said a serpent that bites and kills but draws no pleasure from it 143 false tongue for the serpent deceived Adam and his wife and brought evil on him and the world then Came Yaakov who took the blessings that were his own sharp arrows of the mighty refers to Esau who harbored hatred toward Yaakov on account of the blessings as it is written and Esau hated Yaakov because of the blessing Bershi 2741 144 therefore the Elohim gives you of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth Bershi 2728 namely from above and below Zeir and Pen and Mukba joined together as heaven is Zeir and Pen and the earth is the Mukba and plenty of corn and wine of it has already been explained it is similar to the verse yet I have not seen a just man forsaken and a seed begging bread Tehillim 3725 come and behold I have been young and now I'm old if this verse was said by the minister of the world namely Matron and therefore he said and plenty of corn and wine 145 let people serve you Bershi 2729 this was when King Solomon reigned in Jerusalem as it is written and all the kings of the earth brought every man his present to the ray Hamim 923 to 24 and nations bow down to you at the advent of Mashiach according to the verse and may all kings fall down before him Rabbi Yehuda said all this will occur with the coming of the king Mashiach is written and may all kings fall down before him all nations serve him Tehillim 7211 146 be lord over your brethren Bershi 2729 he asks why does scripture use heavy be instead of the more accepted high or to he answers this is a supernal mystery of faith for these Letters Hey Bob Hey are mysteries of faith the upper Hey Bob I asked Bob in the middle I asked Tiferet and the last Hey I asked Malchut therefore he said heavy be lord over your brethren rule over them and govern them by the power of these letters when King David will appear Rabbi Yossi said that all that will happen when Mashiach will come that is all these blessings allude to the time of the end of correction and after the advent of Mashiach and not before for as long as Israel transgressed it. Words of the Torah then it is written you shall break his yoke from off your neck of it forty therefore blessings will prevail only after the advent of Mashiach when they will repent and sin no more one hundred and forty seven therefore the Elohim give you Bershi two thousand seven hundred and twenty eight Rabbi Yossi said that all these blessings on the side of Yaakov's portion were his and he took his own and its hot wanted to bestow the blessings that belong to Yaakov upon Esau therefore the Holy One blessed be he caused them to revert to Yaakov that he may take that which is his own one hundred and forty eight come and behold of the time when the serpent brought curses upon the world and the land was accursed it is written and to the man he said because you have your kin to the voice of your wife cursed is the ground for your sake Bershi three hundred and seventeen for it will not produce fruit nor vegetation in a proper measure correspondingly Yaakov was given blessings for the time after the advent of Mashiach when the sin of the tree of knowledge will have been atoned for and the fatness of the earth means that the earth will be whole again against the curse and sorrow shall you eat of it but he was blessed of the dew of heaven corresponding to the curse thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you he was blessed accordingly with plenty of corn and wine in opposition to the curse in the sweat of your face shall you eat bread he was blessed as it is written let people serve you and nations bow down to you as they will cultivate the land until the field as it is written and the sons of the alien shall be your plumbing and your vine dressers Yeshayah 615 Yaakov took it all measure for measure each blessing corresponding to one curse of the RRE of knowledge and of his own he took the holy one blessed be he caused Yaakov to receive these blessings and cleave to his place and portion while Esau cleaved to his own place and portion Rabbi YOSI supports what was said that the blessings were valid for the end of Correction by saying that then will the sin of the tree of knowledge be atoned for and it would be possible to merit a blessing instead of a curse which was not true before atoning for the sin of the tree of knowledge 149 Rabbi Shizkiah said we see that the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven were the blessing Esau later received as it is written of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above Bershi 2739 can you say that these correspond to the curses of the tree of knowledge after the penitence at the advent of Mashiach 150 Rabbi Shimon said the one is not like the other ESAV is not like Yaakov and this does not resemble that the blessing of ESAV does not resemble the blessing of Yaakov how different are the grades of Yaakov it is written therefore the Elohim give you and of Esau it is written your dwelling shall be Elohim is not mentioned in this blessing so it will not comprise holiness it is written of Yaakov of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and of Esau of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven with the earth preceding heaven for there is no resemblance between them 151 their grades differ considerably from each other it is written of Yaakov therefore the Elohim give you of the dew of heaven Bershi 2728 this is the supernal dew drawn from Atticum in which is called the dew of heaven that is the dew from above drawn from the great called heaven Zeir and from which it flows into the field of holy apple trees Malchut about which it is then written of the fatness of the earth the earth refers to the land of the living above that is Malchut while uttering the sphere of Bina called living Elohim is then called the land of the living and Yaakov inherited the blessing in the upper earth Malchut and upper heaven the blessing of Esau was in the lower land here and in the lower heaven here in this world Yaakov was blessed high above in the heaven and earth of Atzalut. And Esau down below in the heaven and earth of this world 152 also Yaakov was blessed above and below in the upper heaven and earth and in this world at the advent of Mashiach and Esau only below in heaven and earth of this world and though it is written and it shall come to pass when you shall have the dominion that you shall break his yoke from off your neck Bershi 2740 which means that if Israel will sin the blessings will be annulled this was said concerning heaven and earth here in this world but up above nothing I ask cancelled as it is written for Hashem's portion is his people Yaakov is a lot of his inheritance to 329 come and behold when Yaakov and Esau started to avail themselves of the blessings Yaakov received his share from above and Esau took his share below 153 Rabbi you see the son of Rabbi Shimon son of Lakonia asked Rabbi Lazar has your father explained why the blessings with which it's hot blessed Yaakov did not prevail while the Blessings it's hot bestowed on Esau all did 154 he replied that all these blessings prevailed along with other blessings that the Holy One blessed be he gave to Yaakov but at first Yaakov received all his blessings above only from the upper heaven and earth they were therefore incomplete until he also received the blessings from below and Esau received below after King Mashiach will arise Yaakov will receive above and below that is from the lower heaven and earth as well and Esau will lose everything he will have no portion and inheritance or remembrance in the world this is the meaning of the verse and the house of Yaakov shall be fire and the house of Yosef flame and the house of Esau for stubble over the 18 for Esau will lose everything and Yaakov will inherit both worlds this world namely the lower heaven and earth and the world to come namely the upper heaven and earth it goes without saying that even before the advent of Mashiach Yaakov receives blessings from it. Lower heaven and earth that is when the temple existed on Shabbat and holidays and also through prayers but because they are not constant it is not considered receiving but in the future it shall be permanent 155 at that point it is written and liberators shall ascend
said went outgoing refers to two goings out why because one is of the Shechinah and one of Yaakov for when Yaakov entered the Shechinah came in with him and he was blessed before the Shechinah Yitzhak said the blessings and the Shechinah proved therefore when Yaakov went out the Shechinah went out with him this is the hidden meaning of the phrase and Yaakov went outgoing which mentions two goings out together 157 Ezov his brother came in from his hunting but he asks why is it written his hunting and not the hunting he says that this indicates that it is Ezov's hunting that contains no blessing and the Holy Spirit cried out do not eat the bread of him who has an evil eye Mishle 236 158 and he also had made savory food let my father arise Bershi 2731 his speech was impertinent rough and impolite come and behold the difference between Yaakov and Ezov Yaakov talked to his father humbly with humility it is written and he came to his father and said my father Ibn the difference between the language of Ezov and Yaakov is that Yaakov did not want to frighten him thus he spoke humbly saying arise I pray you sit and eat of my venison and Ezov however said let my father arise as if he was not speaking to him but to himself 159 come and behold when Ezov entered Gehenom came with him and its hot trembled with fear as it is written and its hot trembled very much Bershi 2733 he asks why is very much used to describe trembled. He said Itzhak never felt such fear and terror during his life even when he was strapped upon the altar and saw the knife he did not tremble as when Ezov entered and brought Gehenom with him and he said before you came and have blessed him moreover he shall be blessed for I saw the Sheshanah proving those blessings 160 there is another explanation Itzhak said and have blessed him a voice came forth saying moreover he shall be blessed Itzhak wanted to curse Yaakov but the Holy One blessed be he said to him Itzhak it is you whom you curse for you have said to him curse be those that curse you and blessed be those that bless you Bershi 2729 161 come and behold everyone acknowledged these blessings the upper and lower and even he namely Samael the minister of Esab the part and portion of Ezov acknowledged them and he blessed him and approved of the blessings and raised him above his head that is he was submissive to him 162 from where do we know this from the verse and he said let me go for the day breaks and he said I will not let you go unless you bless me Bershi 3227 it is written and he said let me go because Yaakov had seized him he asked how can a man flesh and blood take hold of an angel which is pure spirit as it is written who makes the winds his messengers the flames of fire his ministers Tehillim 1044 163 he answers it is understood from this that when angels the messengers of the holy one blessed be he descend into this world they are clothed in the body in the likeness of this world for it is not seemly to deviate from the custom of the place one visits 164 we have learned that when Moshe went up he was there with Hashem 40 days and 40 nights he did neither eat bread nor drink water Shema 3428 in order not to deviate from the custom of the place he went to and of the angels who visited Abraham when they descended it is written and he stood by them under the tree and they ate beer shit. 188 here also the descending angel could not struggle with Yaakov unless clothed in the body as is done in this world therefore Yaakov wrestled with him the whole night but if he were not clothed in human form Yaakov could not have wrestled with him 165 come and behold because this those of the other side dominate only during the night assuredly this is why Esau rules only in exile which is night when it is dark for us hence the angel wrestled and struggled with Yaakov during the night but when morning came the strength of the angel failed and he did not prevail then Yaakov got stronger as the dominion of Yaakov is during the day 166 therefore it is written the burden of Duma one calls to me out of Seir watchman what of the night watchman what of the night Yeshayah 2111 for the dominion of Esau who is called Seir is during the night therefore the angel weakened when morning came and then he said let me go for the day breaks 167 and he said I will not let you go unless you bless me Bershi 3227 he commented it is written unless you bless me but it should have been unless you will bless me in the future tense why therefore is it written literally unless you have blessed me in the past tense the reason is that he told him if you will acknowledge the blessings my father gave to me and not denounce me for them then I will let you go for that reason it is written unless you have blessed me in the past tense for it refers to the blessings of its hock it is also written and he said your name shall be called no more Yaakov but Yisrael Bershi 3229 he asks why did he call him Yisrael and he answers that he told him we are compelled to serve you for through your exceeding might you have been crowned above in the highest grade therefore your name shall surely be Yisrael 168 for you have striven with Elohim he asks what is the meaning of the phrase with Elohim could it be that he referred to himself when he said for you have striven with Elohim, the answers have striven to be joined and united with Elohim. The Sheshana is the union of the sun and moon, which are Zeir and Pen and Mukba. Hence, it is not written against Elohim, but rather with Elohim, which indicates joining together with Elohim in a union 169. Another explanation of, and he said, has the same meaning as, and he said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Hashem, your Elohim, Shema 1526, as, and he said, refers to the awakening to strive to hearken to the voice of Hashem here too, and he said, means that he woke him and said, Your name shall be called no more Yaakov, but Yisrael. Then was Yaakov crowned by his grave, for he strove to and rose to the grade of the name Yisrael, which is the Mokin of the first three Sfarah Yisrael, being composed of the letters of Lirash Lit, I have a head by which he will include all the patriarchs, that is, be the central column, which includes the left and right columns, the secret of. The patriarchs Abraham and Itzhak it is written and he blessed him there Bershi 3230 why is the content of the blessing not specified he answers it means that he acknowledged all the blessings with which his father blessed him 170 Rabbi Shimon began the discourse with the verse when a man's ways please Hashem he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him Mishlei 167 come and behold man has much to do if he wants to improve his behavior toward the holy one blessed be he by keeping the precepts of the Torah for we have learned that assuredly man has two angels who are messengers that join him from above one is on his right and the other on his left they observe man in everything he does they are called the good inclination and the evil inclination 171 when a man wishes to be purified and strives to observe the precepts of the Torah the good inclination that joined him overpowers the evil inclination and makes peace with it as a result the evil inclination becomes a slave to the good inclination when a man wishes to be defiled the evil inclination is strengthened and overpowers the good inclination this has already been explained assuredly when man wishes to be purified he has much to overcome when the good inclination is strengthened then he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him for the evil inclination which is his enemy is submissive to the good inclination of the Solomon said better is he that is lightly esteemed and has a servant Mishlei 129 the servant is the evil inclination which becomes a servant to the good inclination then when a man walks by the precepts of the Torah he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him including the evil inclination and its escorts 172 come and behold because Yaakov put his trust in the Holy One blessed be he and all that he did was for his sake his enemies made peace with him specifically Samael who is the strength and might of Esau made peace with Yaakov because Samael made peace with Yaakov and acknowledged all his blessings. Ezov made peace with Yaakov, yet as long as Yaakov did not make peace with Samael, the minister in charge of Ezov, then Ezov did not have made peace with him. This is because strength below always depends on strength above. As long as the strength of the ministers in charge over them is not weakened above, it is not possible to weaken the strength in this world. 173 and its hot trembled very much and said, Who then have you for this? He bears 2733. He asks, What is the meaning of who then it should have been? Who is it for if it literally means where he answers? Who then is correct? Because the Shechinah stood there when it's hot. Blessed Yaakov, thus he said, Who then, which means where is he who stood here and approved the blessings whom I blessed? Assuredly, he shall be blessed for the Holy One. Blessed be he approved these blessings. 174 Rabbi Yehuda said that for this trembling that Yaakov brought upon. Itzhak his father Yaakov was punished by the selling of Yosef and he trembled when they said to him this we have found Bershi 3732 Itzhak said who then have Ifa and by Ifa Yaakov was punished and although the Holy One blessed be he approved all the blessings nevertheless he was punished by Ifa as it is written where Ifa they feed their flock Bershi 376 where Yosef was
Death who came in with ESAB he then said who then moreover he shall be blessed Bershi 2733 when he understood that the blessings belong to Yahikov and not ESAB 176 and when Ezov heard the words of his father Bershi 2734 Rabbi Shia said these fears brought so much evil upon Yisrael that Ezov cried to be blessed before his father whose words were very important to him because of the accusations were made that Yisrael did not honor their fathers as he did is not he rightly named. Yaakov but 36 means so he named him he who did so namely the Holy One blessed be he he uttered this as if spitting to degrade he who called him Yaakov it is not written is not he rightly named but literally did not he rightly named him this indicates that he did not mean to degrade Yaakov but he who named him Yaakov 177 for he has supplanted these Hebzalit this two times he asks why add the words A to modify supplanted two times he answers it means two matters are contained in one the word Bekaretai my birthright became at another time Bershetai my blessing for they consist of the same letters two times which indicates that the same matter was repeated twice for the birthright belongs to the firstborn and because he took his birthright he also took his blessing thus the two deceptions are one in the same manner the verse surely now we had returned this Hebz a second time Bershi 4310 means that two matters are in one one we would have returned Heb. Shabnu by now and not be put to shame had Bashmu by that man and too literally we would have been back already the Hebrew letters of Shabnu are the same as of Bashmu 178 similarly Eof said and hold me for your enemy Eof 1324 the letter combination Eof turned into Oyev enemy this was explained according to the verse for he crushes me with a tempest Eof 917 he said before him master of the universe perhaps a tempest stormed at you and I Yov turned into your enemy here also he took away my birthright had Bekaretai and the combination turned into my blessing had Bershetai as in he has taken away my blessing 179 behold I have made him your lord and what shall I do now for you my son Bershi 2737 this means that there is no one present who gives consent that you will receive blessings therefore it is written what shall I do now for you my son he then blessed him in this world he looked at his great and said to him and by your sword shall you live for it is fitting of you to shed blood and wage war since you cleave to the left which is of judgments therefore he said what shall I do now for you my son as your great merits no blessing 180 rabbi laser discussed the verse what shall I do now for you why add my son this is because he asked him what shall I do now for you I have seen you in judgment sword and blood and I have seen your brother walking the path of peace he added my son for surely I brought all this upon you as you are my son therefore by your sword shall you live and you shall serve your brother this has not yet happened for Ezov is not yet a servant of Yaakov this is because Yaakov has no need for him now and he repeatedly called Ezov my master because Yaakov looked far ahead and saved it to the end of days as we said above 181 as Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi were walking together they noticed that Rabbi Yossi Saba was behind them they sat down until he caught up to them when he did he said now the Path is ready before us and they went on Rabbi Shia quoted the verse it is time to act for Hashem Tehillim 119,126 while Rabbi Yossi began with the verse she opened her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is a Torah of steadfast love Tehillim 316 she opened her mouth with wisdom alludes to the congregation of Israel which is the Shechina and on her tongue is a Torah of steadfast love refers to Israel who are the tongue of the Torah which is on their lips day and night 182 she opened her mouth with wisdom this is a letter bed of Bereshit and in the beginning it is the secret of the Nukva called house Hebbeit and on her tongue is a Torah of steadfast love Lachisid refers to Avraham the secret of the column of Chisid with which he created the world and he speaks always of the Torah which is the drawing down of Chisid therefore it is said and on her tongue is a Torah of Chisid he further explains that the letter bed is closed on one side and open on. The other it is closed on one side as it is written and you shall see my back Shema 3323 on the other side bed is open so that its face will shine upward towards Zeir and it is also open to receive from Zeir and above as wide open as a foyer to receive bright light for a foyer receives more sunshine than a house for that reason the letter bed stands at the beginning of the Torah this is the secret of the verse she opened her mouth with wisdom and later was filled with all the words of the Torah which is the secret of and on her tongue is a Torah of steadfast love another explanation for the verse she opened her mouth with wisdom is that it alludes to the Torah which assuredly opens with wisdom as it is written in the beginning Elohim created Bereshit 11 for in the beginning is wisdom in the Aramaic translation of the verse and on her tongue is a Torah of steadfast love she said the Torah later reads and Elohim said let there be light and there was light of it. 3, which is the light of Chisid. Another explanation for the verse she opened her mouth with wisdom is that it is the first hay of the holy name Yudi Hay which is bind in which everything is contained, it is concealed and revealed, comprising both what is above and below. 183, she opened her mouth with wisdom because it is concealed and utterly unrevealed as it is written, seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the birds of the sky. Eo 2821, when Bada started to spread together with Chakma that cleaved to it and was clothed in it, namely in the secret of the verse, she opened her mouth with wisdom. It could not spread until it issued a sound, namely Zeir and the central column, which is a Torah of Chisid, of which it is written, and under tongue is a Torah of Chisid. 184, still another explanation of the verse she opened her mouth with wisdom is that the last hay of the name Yudi Hay namely the Mukba, refers to speech, which Depends on wisdom. This means that there is no speech without wisdom and thought. Therefore, it is said of the Mukva. She opened her mouth with wisdom. The verse and on her tongue is a Torah of Chisid. Alludes to the voice, namely Zeir Anpin, which controls and conducts speech. The Mukva. Further explanation of the Torah of Chisid. Love is Yaakov, namely Zeir Anpin, called Torah and Chisid. He is on her tongue over the speech to guide the word and be united with it. For there is no speech without. Sound 185. Rabbi Shia then quoted the verse. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find knowledge in crafty schemes. Mishlei 812. I wisdom refers to the congregation of Israel, namely the Mukva called the Lord Chakma dwell with prudence is Yaakov who is prudent because he took the blessings prudently and with cunning and find knowledge in crafty schemes. Alludes to its who used knowledge and stratagems to bless his wisdom. The Shechina called wisdom was joined with Yaakov who. Dealt with prudence, therefore Yaakov was to find knowledge in crafty devices by which he was blessed by his father who had knowledge of stratagems to bless ESAV and all the blessings rested upon him and prevailed upon him and his descendants forever. 186 Some have prevailed in this world and all will prevail at the advent of King Mashiach when Israel will be one nation in the land. Yashiskal 3722 One nation before the Holy One, blessed be he. This is the meaning of the verse and I will make them one nation in the land and they will reign above and below as it is written. And behold, one like a son of man came with the clouds of heaven. Daniel 713 This is King Mashiach as it is written and in the days of these kings shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom. Daniel 244 Therefore Yaakov wanted his blessings to be postponed and did not take them at once. 187 Rabbi Yossi then quoted the verse, But fear not, O my servant Yaakov, and be not dismayed, Israel, your mayah 4627. This verse has already been explained nevertheless after Yaakov had received his father's blessings he searched himself and said I want these very blessings to be postponed for the time so they will last he was frightened lest the blessings dwell upon him now for they might be negated if Israel sinned a voice resounded saying fear not O Yaakov my servant says Hashem for I am with you Ibid 28 and I will never leave you for behold I will save you from afar Ibid 27 at the time for which the blessings were reserved 188 the verse and your seed from the land of their captivity means that although Esau now took the blessings and his children will enslave your children I will free them from his hands and your children will enslave him then Yaakov shall return meaning return to these blessings to the Shechinah that will be with Yaakov again and Yaakov will return assuredly and be quiet and at ease as has been explained that he will have rest from the kingdoms of Babylon. Media Greece and Edom which were enslaving Israel and none shall make him afraid forever and ever 189 as they continued walking Rabbi Yoss
Holy words by which to conceive wondrous things as it is written open you my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your Torah. Tehillim 11918 191 come and behold when the serpent deceived Adam and his wife when he approached her and injected impurity into her Adam succumbed to temptation and the world was defiled and the land became accursed because of him he brought death to the world and the world was punished because of him until the tree of life came atoned for Adam and subjugated the serpent so that his seed will never rule the seed of Yaakov 192 for when Yisrael offered to go the serpent was subdued and became a slave of Yisrael as we learned therefore Yaakov served his father two goats Hebesi and one with which to subjugate Esau who is Harry Hebesi Iron and the other for the great upon which Esau depended and to which he cleaved this was Samael the minister of Esab 193 therefore the world is accursed until a woman comes who resembles Chabah and a man who resembles Adam they will deceive and beguile the serpent and the one ruling him namely Samael we have already learned this 194 he opened the discussion with the verse and Esau was a cunning hunter a man of the field and Yaakov was a plain man dwelling in tents Verse 2527 the phrase a plain man means a whole man according to the Aramaic translation as illustrated by the fact that he was dwelling in tents he was plain because he dwelt in tents which means that he held Fast the two sides right and left which are Abraham and Itzhak and he was found whole both on the right the light of Chesedim and the left the illumination of Chakma because he comprises of both sides Yaakov came to Esau from the side of Itzhak that was included in him this is the secret of the two he goats he served Itzhak which came from the illumination of the left aspect of Itzhak as we learned from the verse with the merciful you will show yourself merciful and with the perverse you will show yourself subtle tale in 1826 to 27 when he came to receive the blessings he came with support of Abraham and Itzhak from above namely support from both the right and left sides and so all was done wisely 195 come and behold when Yaakov arose against Samael the great of Esau Samael fought and wrestled with him but Yaakov overpowered him in several ways he conquered the serpent with cunning and subtlety but he was only overpowered by the goat that is by the two he Goats he served to Itzhak his father with these he conquered Esab the great of the serpent as has been said and though all is one namely the serpent and Samael nevertheless he also conquered and overpowered Samael in another battle this is derived from the verse and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he did not prevail against him Bereshit 3225 to 26196 come and behold the merit of Yaakov was such that he Samael wanted to exterminate Yaakov from the world that night was the night when the moon was created that is Wednesday eve a time of danger and Yaakov stayed alone and no one was with him as we have learned that a man must not venture out alone at night this is even more true on the night when the luminaries were created for then the moon is defective as it is written let there be lights have me or Bereshit 114 and the word me or is spelled without the letter Bob which is a sign of a curse because Yaakov remained. Alone at night he was in great danger because when the moon is defective the evil serpent is strengthened and rules and Samael came and denounced Yaakov and wanted him to perish from the world 197 but Yaakov was strong on all sides on the side of Itzhak and the side of Abraham Samael came to the right and saw Abraham strong with the vigor of day namely the right side which is Jesus he came to the left and saw Itzhak powerful with the strength of rigorous judgment he came to the body namely to the central column and saw Yaakov strong on these two sides Abraham and Itzhak surrounded him one from here and one from there then when he saw that he did not prevail against him he touched the hollow of his thigh Bereshit 3226 a place outside the body the one pillar of the body on which the whole body is supported namely Netzach the pillar of Typhoret called body then and the hollow of Yaakov's thigh was put out of joint as he wrestled with him Ibid 198 once day. Broken night departed Yaakov was strengthened and the power of Samael diminished and he said let me go of it 27 for it was his time to say the morning hymns and he had to leave he confirmed his blessings and added a blessing of his own as it is written and he blessed him there of it 3199 come and behold how many were the blessings Yaakov received the one from his father he earned through cunning and that gained him all these many blessings the one of the Shechinah he received from the Holy One blessed be he when he returned from Laban as it is written and Elohim blessed him Bereshit 359 he was given one by the minister of Esau and one from his father when he went to Patnaram as it is written and El Shaddai bless you Bereshit 283 200 at the time when Yaakov saw himself with all these blessings he said which shall I use now he decided to use the weakest blessing of all and which is that it is the last blessing from his father and although this too is a Powerful blessing it is not as strong for having power over the world as the first ones 201 Yaakov said I will avail myself of this blessing and use it the others I will reserve until the time when I and my children after me will need them when will this be at the time the nations gather to exterminate my children from the world as it is written all nations compass me about but in the name of Hashem I cut them off they compass me about indeed they compass me they compass me about. Like beast Tehillim 11810 to 12 there are three verses that correspond to the three blessings that he did not use the one is the blessing from his father the second is the blessing from the holy one blessed be he and the third is the blessing he was given by the angel 202 Yaakov said at that time I will need all the blessings to protect me from the kings and all the nations in the world that will surround me therefore I will reserve these blessings for that time and now for Esau this blessing. Should suffice to with the second blessing his father gave him this is like a king who had several battalions of mighty warriors and several qualified ministers of war capable of engaging in warfare against mighty kings in the meantime when he learned about a great robber he sent his gatekeepers to fight him when his servants asked him why did you choose to send the gatekeepers when you have such strong battalions available the king replied these will suffice to cope with this robber I will reserve the battalions and ministers for war against the mighty king so they will be available when I need them 203 Yaakov said the same to cope with these of these blessings he received from his father when he went to Patanaram will suffice but the rest of the blessings I shall reserve for that time when my children will need them to fight the kings and rulers in the world who will rise against them 204 when that time arrives all the blessings will be aroused on all sides towards Israel and the world will be properly established from that day on this kingdom shall rise that is the supernal kingdom the Mukbav Zeir and above all the other kingdoms as was explained when discoursing on the verse but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever Daniel 244 this is the stone that was cut out of the mountain and not by man which was mentioned in the scripture as it is written from hence from the shepherd the stone of Israel. Bereshit 4924 what is the stone it is the congregation of Israel the Mukbav Zeir and as written and the stone which I have set for a pillar Bereshit 2822 which is the Mukbav 205 Rabbi she has said that from this it is understood that the rest of the blessings of Yaakov remain for Israel to use in the future as it is written a remnant shall return even the remnant of Yaakov Yeshua 1021 about these remaining blessings it has been written a remnant shall return meaning that they will return to Israel it is also written and the remnant of Yaakov shall be in the midst of many peoples Mitchah 56 that I am among all the nations not Esau alone for then the rest of the blessings will be aroused as it is written and the remnant like do from Hashem 206 Rabbi Isaac quoted the verse a son honors his father and a servant his master Malachi 16 a son refers to Esau for in the whole world there was no man who respected his father as Esau did the homage he paid him made him ruler of the world 207 and a servant his master refers to Elizar the servant of Abraham this has been explained the man came to Jaron with great wealth and camels loaded with many gifts to lavish yet he did not say to Betuel and Levin that he is Abraham's friend or any other man who came at Abraham's request but when he started his speech it is written and he said I am Abraham's servant Bereshit 2434 later he repeated several times my master because he respected Abraham. With honor and kindness they were patient with him for some time 208 by right of that honor that he showed to his father the Holy One blessed be he was forbearing with him when he ruled this world and these are the tears that Israel shed under his yoke until Israel will return to the Holy One blessed be he with crying and tears and weeping as it is written they shall come with weeping Yermeah 318 and then and liberators shall ascend upon Mount Zion to judge the mountain of Esau and the kingdom shall be Hashem's Obadiah 121 blessed be